Bro, I just wrote a uh, a big, you know what? Uh, where we at? Shout out to the moderators. We we live. Uh, let's get this thing cracking, man. <clears throat> Make sure I do it to the stream. Support the church. Shout out to Mr. Scott Nguyen. So, <laughs> okay, this is going to be a very good stream. Um, due to the fact that it's going to wake a lot of you guys up. <laughs> because women are really good. Great to see you, money. They're really good at lying to you. And they're really good at playing you. Okay. When I talk about how women treat attractive men versus unattractive men. Now, disclaimer before we get into it. That attractive man is all subjective. Shout out to John Hamm. Thank you for contributing. So, I could uh, uh, I could be a girl could be attracted to me and then I go to another girl she not might, might not be attracted to me. Shout out to Mr. uh off the Ali Cron, Frank Williams, Robert A. Check it in. All the uh, Apex Predator members, all the moderators, great to see you. So we're going to get into this because, <laughs> man, so many guys are like mad at women and like frustrated because, like, let's say hypothetically you go approach a chick, right? Shout out to uh, Mr. Judah Wara. And uh, who is that to keep uh, SB Dunks? Dude, which y'all, yeah, put, them, put them in town. Um, guys, you know what it feels like a lot of the times with, with like guys that come in here that's like kind of, kind of like one of my recognition. It feels like a like a female, like like fishing for attention, right? So let's get to it. Um, a lot of guys are mad because when they go approach a girl, they go to talk to a girl, even if they like match with a girl. Shout out to Mr. Uh, Samuli. Uh, not this great to see you, brother. They go to approach a girl. Or they match with a girl on a dating app or something like that. And what'll happen is uh, they'll chop up with a girl and then, you know, uh, they'll be texting. So they'll move from online or, you know, the, inter the cold interaction in person, the approach to, it, you know, text and everything that he tried to set up a date. But as he's texting, she's all into him. But then they try to set up a date and she like flakes. Right. Or is she trying to set up a date? And this is what women do when, they, when they're not attracted to you. Let's say hypothetically, you set up a date with a chick, right? Let's say, um, what's today? Today's Thursday. Let's say I set up a date with a chick uh, for Sunday. Now, Thursday, she's texting me. All happy, some emojis maybe. For, and then after, after, see, after I set the date, what'll happen is she'll just go ghost. And you're like, that was kind of weird. And you're like, okay, well, I'll just hit her up on, you know, Sunday and just make sure she's still down. And what will happen is um, she won't text you. Right? She won't hit you up. She won't hit you back. Or she'll say like, um, sorry, um, I was just about to text you. Uh, um, can we reschedule? I had to come in for work tonight. And you're like, but we were texting. This is how women treat guys they're not into. One of the ways. Somebody said uh, unattractive guys would get the leftovers. No, unattractive guys don't get the leftovers because I'm unattractive. See, that's what you guys understand. Before you guys comment and everything and, and go wild, and and um, you guys have to get out of this, this sort of uh, tunnel vision lens, right? This is where the game and the wisdom actually comes into play. Too many guys are so red pill focused. You have to understand... I'm unattractive to a female down the street, but a female on the other side of town, I'm attracted to, or she's attracted to me, right? So it's all subjective. But for, a, uh, this is, what I'm saying is how women treat guys that they're, they're not, I should, I should have said the title, how women treat guys that they're not attracted to, or unattractive guys, they, they don't put you in a friend zone. They just say, let's be friends. And they, they're hoping that you get the hint to, like, move on. But if you accept a friend zone or something like that, or let's be friends, they'll just say, all right, forget it. 
Because women are hoping that you just get it. And we'll open up the lines in a little bit. Because I know guys want to call the show and all this other stuff like that. Thanks for the good work you put me on game. Shout out to Mr. Eversley Saul. Meanwhile, Tyquell's pipe. <laughs> pipe he said, uh, Tyquell, that's a new one. Pipe pleasing her. Knowledge is key to success and inner grind. Yeah, as I realized, man, um, you have to recognize when a woman is not into you. You got to recognize when a woman doesn't like you. Uh, somebody said, uh, Snake Eyes. He said, so, uh, hey, Darius, how many women ask you to use protection for sex? Yada, yada. Hit the super chat if you have any questions, guys. I'm not answering any questions like that, man. Um, so, and I'll open up the, uh, the lines and give me, give me like 10 minutes. Cause I know if I get too far into the show and, I, and I'm lecturing too much, then it'll be like hour and a half and I just like forget. Right. So, uh, when it comes to women liking you, most of them won't shout to Jeremy water, but a lot, but, but a, a small percentage of them will. That's because women love attention. Let me put some gas in timeout. Uh, where we at? Let me put some guys in timeout. Uh, big shout out to Mr. Uh, Zeter P PB Gas. Give him a hand clap. Big shout out to Zeter PB Gas. Make sure you guys become an Apex Predator member. Um, the link is pinned up top for $99 a month. Check it out. Check out the uh, the perks that, that come along with it. So, if you're an unattractive guy to a female, what she's got to do is she's got to make you jump through hoops. She's going to uh, make you do a lot of different things before you guys like get together and hang out. Now, again, I'll say it throughout the stream so a lot of guys can understand attraction for women is all subjective. So a woman can be, let's just hypothetically like this. A woman can like black guys and like me, but she not like white guys like that. Or a woman can like just be into white guys and then not, then not like black guys. So it's, it's all subjective. Every woman finds you, uh, all types of women find you attractive. All types of other women don't find you attractive. This is why you always have to have the, it's all, it's a numbers game when you out there. Because guys, you can exchange numbers with, like, let me tell you something. This is how, this is how uh, funny women operate. You guys exchange numbers, right? Shout out to John Ham. And y'all be talking and everything. And then after that, you try to hang out and then she'll be like, oh, um, I'm busy. And you're like, you're thinking, what, what do you mean? What? I, I thought we were having a good conversation. You probably approached her on some masculine sh uh, stuff. You look at her in the eye. You stand it up straight and everything. And, and she's smiling. And then, boom. All of a sudden, she's just like, oh, you know, um, uh, y'all exchange numbers. And she don't want to hang out with you. You got to understand, women love attention. Like, they love it. And I notice where, like, a lot of guys get mad or frustrated with women. Right, not busy for Justin Bieber. So... This is why it's a numbers game. When I say it's a numbers game when you out there in the field like this, guys, like you could be talking to like, you could get, guys, you could get 10, 10 women's numbers today. Let's say you're just out there approaching talking women, even on day naps. You mix it up. You got 10 women's numbers today. Guess what? All 10 of them could easily like ghost you or flake on you or just try to string you along. This is why it's, it's paramount that you uh, understand where to put your attention. Oh, choosing signals. I remember uh, speaking, I, a story came to mind, right? And I was talking to this chick a while back. This is this is how savage women are. I'll admit, John Hamm, men are not approaching women as much, but that does give you an advantage. But um, I, I remember I was at the gym this one time. And um, it was a while back. I never forget. This is how savage women are. What they'll do is they'll walk around you and they'll prance around you. They'll just be around you and everything, working out here and there. Now, every woman does it. But there's that small, small percentage, that minute percentage. And she's like literally giving you choosing signals. She's like hoping that you come over and talk to her. But it was this particular woman, uh, this chick, like a while back. So um, she's like walking and everything. She has like this little like uh, model type of walk. And she knows I like, I, I looked at her, right? And I remember I was on this one machine and I was like doing some bench press. 
And she, it was like something over there. She comes way over by where I was at, like way over. And she's like, hey, you using that? She's like, thank you. And then she like prances off on some like model type of shit. So I'm like, okay. So I'm like, oh, this chick. So in any man's mind, he's like, oh, he's a, she, she, uh, that's her, that's a, like a choosing signal, right? So I go to another machine and then I'm working out somewhere. And then she just happens to come out, come by me and start working out. I said, okay, you know what? This is a choosing signal. This is, I mean, she's literally basically throwing it at me on the silver platter. So I, I, I go, I go up to her and say, hey, you know, hey, how's it going? I said, uh, you did some modeling before? Cause you, you know, you, I see you prancing around, you know, just the conversation started. She was like, she started to like kind of uh, laugh like, no, I don't do no model. I just, you know, I'm just feeling good today. I said, oh, cool. I said, so how do you come, how do you come to the gym? She was like, uh, I go like, uh, you know, like every other day, something like that. I go with my girl sometime. I'm like, oh, that's what's up. I said, you stay in the area? She's like, yeah, I, I stay like 20 minutes from here. Not too far. I said, uh, I'm like, uh, would you like to do your free time? You know, just, just chopping up some game. I'm like, um, so what you like to do in your free time when you're not at the gym? She was like, uh, like soon as I said that, she was like, um, uh, I'm busy a lot. I'm like, oh yeah. So what you like to do? She was like, um, and I, Never forget. And this never happened to me before when I was approaching a chick. It's just one time. This is why you should never take like a rejection like yeah, by women. Like, don't take it to heart. So what happened was I said, So what you what you, what you, like, what you like doing your free time? You're not the gym. She's like, Oh, I'm busy. And I'm like, um, no, it's not crickets. Yeah, hey, moderators, man. I make y'all moderators for a reason. Make sure I put these guys in time out, man. Hey, who wanna be a moderator? Cause seem like my moderators ain't doing their job, man. Um so, uh, anyway, what was that? So I uh, said, so what you like to do in your free time when you're, you're at the gym? And he's like, oh, um, uh, I'm busy. I'm like, oh, okay, so what you like to do when you're busy? Like, what you, you know? And I, and I knew when she said, oh, I'm busy, because she knew I was going to be like, I was going to try to, you know, escalate the conversation to get together, hang out, exchange those, whatever. And I remember she was like, uh, she stopped and she was like something to the effect of, um, if you want to hang out with me, I charge you. She said, I, if you want to hang out with me, I charge you. She was, don't, don't, I'm, give me, don't get me wrong. She's a good looking girl. And I'm like, and she was like kind of close. She was like, if you want to hang out with me, I charge you. And she like, you know, walked away. And I'm like, oh, see, I was like, oh, I was like, all right. And I just kept working out. But you got to understand women, they'll, they're fishing for attention constantly. Like all the time. Shout out to Mr. Jonathan Lake. There's a fall of Derek. What's up, bro? London. Uh, shout out to Jonathan Lake. Sorry, I had to grab food. Shout out to G Money. Yeah, moderators. Uh, um, yeah, she was. Yeah, she, I never figured she was like. Uh, she was like, uh, if you want to hang out with me, I charge you. She said. She said something like, if you want to hang out with me, I'm gonna charge. You. I'm like, all right. I'm like, <laughs> and. It was just funny because, guys, women will take attention from any guys. You can be a, a midget. Excuse me, shout out to all the midgets out there. You can be a guy that like it doesn't matter if you're attractive or not. A woman will still take your attention. Guys, make sure you become an apex predator member, man. I'll put the link up. Nine ninety nine a month. Nine ninety nine a month. It's pinned up the top right there of the chat. Like women are savages. They do not care about getting your attention. This is why um I treat women the way I treat them. Now I'm not like an um, evil person, right? But when it comes to women, you have to understand. You have to be literal, guys. Women are cold. When I say cold blooded, they're cold blooded. Like no two ways about it. There's only a small minute percentage, and I've talked to a lot of women in world, women in this world. There's only a small minute percentage who actually uh, care about you and do things for you. Like and and this. Uh, there we go. I'm glad you said something. See you later. Uh, and, and guys, if you want to make silly comments, we'll just get rid of you. It's, it's, and you can come back with another account, but we'll just give you there and give you there. Um, so they're cold blooded. They're savages. So you, as a man, you have to treat them as such. You have to be cold with these women. You have to be direct. 
You can't be passive and try to weasel your way around the conversation and everything like that. No, you have to be direct. And a lot of guys don't understand. They're like, well, uh, if I like try to run some game on a female, if I straight up tell her to come over my place, then um, she going to reject me. Dude, she would have rejected you anyway. So what's the point of shooting all this game to her? Be direct. Too many guys, you guys, you, you guys are not take, are not taking my uh, my uh, my content to heart. Yeah, guys, make sure you guys uh, are moderators. This is why, guys, like straight up, you got to be direct with these women. And guys, get guys don't understand that when you just straight up and tell a girl to cut, like, oh, come over to the crib, let's have some wine or something like that. I, I let's watch a couple movies or something like that. Let's you know, let's have some wine or play some cards. If she's like, no, I got to meet you in public first. She's lying to you. She's lying. Guys, please, please. Guys, I'll say this real quick before I continue. This is how I know guys really don't listen to me. A lot of times they look at the skin color. I was looking at this, this dating coach's channel, right? Like a few months ago. And I, and I just happened to look at just, just looking at comments. I, I learned, you learn a lot from comments because you see where dude's head's at. And I saw in a, I saw in a uh, video of his. I'm not going to say his name. He got like a hundred and some thousand subscribers. Uh, Caucasian brother. White guy. And I see in a video and it's a, somebody commented and said, oh, this is what that guy Darius M said, uh, exactly said. So he was right. And I'm looking, I'm like, what do you mean I, well, I was right? What a lot of guys don't understand is I dealt with... My main chick is white. I predominantly deal with non-black women. And I've dealt with every race of women. White, black, Hispanic, Asian, even an Indian chick. So you guys understand, when I tell you these things, it's coming from a place of, I've, I've, I've been with the women that you guys want. I've, I've dealt with the women that you guys are dealing with now. You understand? So when I tell you guys, tell women to just straight up, oh yeah, tell you know, invite her over. If she says, "Oh, I gotta," like I remember I was talking to a chick a while back. She was like, "Oh, I, I, I gotta, uh, I gotta go meet you out. Uh, I gotta meet you uh, in public a few times. Like we gotta go out a, uh, like uh, a few times before like I, I, I go to your house." What women when women are basically saying is, "Dude, I don't find you all that attractive." Now it's funny because women are very sneaky. They will tell you, they will straight up tell you, "Oh, you're cute, you're handsome." But what they'll do is they'll, when it's time to hang out and get together and hook up, what will happen is they'll decline. Or they'll say, oh, you got to take me out. What she's basically saying is, I just wanted your attention and you got to take me out. This is why personally, I, like if I'm going to meet a chick somewhere, it's going to be at the park or Starbucks. Preferably at the park because I'm not, I'm not trying to have a chick because what women will do like. Uh, to guys that they're not really into. When you go to order your coffee, they'll be standing like behind you. Right? Because they're hoping that you pay for their coffee, even if it's three, four dollars. A latte. Yeah, and understand women are natural receivers. They're guys, it's not built in women to give. This is why if you find a woman who's giving. Bruh, you, now I'm not saying you worship her, but you, you keep that woman around. Like my main chick, she's very giving. She hit me up today. like, Hey, um, you running out of body wash. I'm gonna, uh, go, you know, I'm gonna order online. Um, you know, send me the link so I can use some body wash. I didn't even know I was running out of body wash like that. Cause I'm just used to pumping it and everything. And, I, and my body wash is like that. No homo. <laughs> so you gotta understand if you have a giving, uh, woman who's, who, 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 uh, thinks about you, dude, you have to run with that. Now, again, you still have your standards. You don't let her walk over you and you uh, be ready to walk away. But, guys, it's it's extremely rare for you to find a woman who is, is thinking about you, who has her mind on you. It, when I say extremely, and I've been with a lot of chicks, and most chicks, I'm telling you, they're like, uh, they're like, okay, we're going to take me out. We're going to do that. It, it, guys, it, it's, a, it's a cold world, especially if women are, don't find you attractive. Guys, man, these women will sh will make your life miserable. Because here's the thing. The reason why I say be direct with women, because they already know you want to have sex. They already know you want to hook up. 
I'd rather just straight go for the journey and say, hey, you want to get together and hang out? Then to be sitting there texting on the phone, talking about, oh, what you like to do? Uh, where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to school? Because she already know that I want to hang out. Be, like that. It, it, it's, it's, we're humans. It's natural. So for all you guys who aren't with the direct approach and all you guys who are with the, uh, oh, uh, talk about things and, and try to get to know her. Now you can like ask a couple questions, but if you're sitting there on the phone asking her about all this stuff and uh, and 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 uh, calling her and all this stuff, dude, you're wasting your time. Trust me, I know I know how these women are. A woman knows that she want to hang out, hook up with you right away anyway, so you might as well just go for the jugular. That texted night, it's a high school game. That's like kindergarten. Excuse me, it's like middle school. Y'all text like it's pointless. Shout out to Mr. MGD Beats. Random chick came to my car asking a ride to her hotel. She was headed to Texas to see her kids. She booked a room. I smashed just because how I was dressed. Yeah, man. Guys, yeah, you understand when you when you on point and you and you and you're a groom. Let me say this. A lot of the times, guys, it's about your masculine uh, frame. It's about your essence. I went, I went into the dealership earlier, right? And I got, when I say crazy choosing signals from like a couple of chicks that was in the lobby area, I went to get my oil change earlier, right? Dropped it off and said, all right, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll call you when it's ready. So I'm in, I'm standing in the lobby, you know, standing up a little bit and it's this pregnant chick, you know, cute little lady. And she looked, she's literally looking at me and I, I can feel her eyes on me. And I sit down in my chair and she's like, oh, over there. And I could just feel her eyes on me. You got to understand, being masculine, it's very, very rare for a woman to be around a masculine guy because it's so watered down right now. Just like it's really rare for a woman, excuse me, for us men to, to, to be around a feminine woman. Like when I, if I, when I tell you guys, oh, my main chick, she does this, she does this, she cooks and cleans, she, she rubs me, she gives me good massages, literally... I, like she does all these different things. When I tell guys that they're like, man, that's a dream chick. And, it, and it's messed up because that should be the norm. But you got so many uh, chicks that are, who are selfish out here in the game that most men won't be able to experience that. I remember this is how quality my chick is. And I'm not going to big her up because uh, every chick is on probation. Shout out to Unique Mind. I was sleep. I was sleep, right? And as I was sleep. She's just literally rubbing my temples. And I can, you know how you sleep, but you're awake? And I can feel her rubbing my head. My, I'm like, and I just kind of, I'm just, that's how you know you got a quality chick. When you're sleeping and she's still thinking about how to please you. She's still thinking about how, how can she serve you and make you feel good even when you're sleeping. But she's still on probation for her life. She's still a main chick. She can still get downgraded to the side chick. Trust me. Shout out to Unique Mind. He says, uh, listening in and out, but I definitely rewatch if you're uh, keeping this live up. I will be Unique Mind. Shout out to MGD Beats as well. Literally, every chick has to be on contract. You know why? Because they got y'all on contract, man. Like, most guys think that having a woman around means that you just got to pay for everything, you got to do everything, and you just get occasional sex. That's not life, dude. That's not how your life should be. And if that is your life, you got to keep moving. Guys, you should never, ever, ever have to pay for sex. Never. When I say never, my brothers, never. Period. If you're paying for sex and you're in here, and when I say paying for sex, not just giving her money, say, here, all right, let's have sex. What I'm saying paying for sex is you feel like you have to take her out and do a lot of different things in order to get sex. So y'all know what I'm talking about. I don't have to, it, it's, it's, there's no gray area in there. Shout out to Mr. Jerry Young. You're my slime dares. Thank you, Jerry. Love you, man. Looking for a reason to get rid of women nowadays. She can't be another man's headache. Exactly. And guys, you got to realize, man, 
uh, these women nowadays, they're single for a reason. Let me say, y'all got to let them perish. Guys, let these women perish. And, and because we, us, at the end of the day, we get the last laugh. Guys, us men, we get the last laugh at the end of the day. At the end of the because guess what? I'm 32 years old right now. 32-year-old women don't look as good as I am, period. 32-year-old women, they're, 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 they're looking for security. They're looking for a man. Me, I'm chilling. I'm enjoying life. I'm in great shape. I'm in great health. I'm, I'm hitting on all cylinders. I have no worries as a man. As, as opposed to a woman who's even 30 years old, 30, 32. Guess what? She's looking, uh, she's looking for a guy like myself to save her. They're searching, guys. Women everywhere. Every single well, straight woman. Hey, even a, a woman who, you know, is bi or something like that. Because I think I, I put on a, um, on a Facebook page or, or Instagram page, it was a female on Tinder a while back. Somebody sent it to me. And she was like, uh, I'm looking for a guy. She was like, um, I'm looking for a guy, you know, to settle down with. But I still, me I, I still like mess around with like women. Basically, she was like, I'm looking for a guy who's going to take care of me. But I still want to sleep around and, uh, and deal with women for free. Bob Spence says, uh, I'm looking better than most women, even eights and nines and tens, because I take care of myself all around. Exactly. Guys, all you got to do is work out, run. All you got to do is eat right. Heck, dr just drink a lot of water. That, that cancel out a lot of stuff. Um, Because you'll have a leg up on women. Guys, women are suffering right now. They are suffering. Now, could I care less how they, if they cry? And I know, but they're suffering because I know women. They're out there looking for commitment. Just think about this, guys. You have to find the guy to take care of you. That's like me out here looking like trying to find a woman or trying to manipulate a woman to pay my bills. Like, just, just think of that. This is why, you guys, you got to be grateful for being a man. Yes, it's, you know, it, it's some goofiness. But at the same time, guys, women are out there hunting for guys. They're trying to manipulate you to, to, to uh, take them to Chili's. Women are trying to manipulate you to take them out to eat. They're trying to force you to take them out to eat. Oh, you uh, I, I gotta uh you gotta take me out to a restaurant first. We gotta go on three dates first. It's like, dang, that's not even genuine desire. Like, should the woman want a dude that wants to take her out on three dates, as opposed to saying, like, oh, this is my rule, you gotta take me out. It's like that's not it. that's like me saying, Oh, you gotta have sex with me as a woman. It's like, no, you don't have to. I mean, I want if you want to, cool. Well, I remember Darius even mentioned once that we actually look a lot better than most women out there past makeup. It actually kind of weird, weirds me out to realize they're not attracted to us. Well, uh, the reason why, guys, you got to understand the social media game and the dating apps, man, that, that's having a, let me tell you something, um, that's having a huge impact on how women view you. A lot of guys, uh, and I got this question uh, a couple of times that I was on, I have a consultation. They're like, man, Darius, I'm a good looking guy. I'm in shape. And I tried to, you know, uh, uh, talk to or, or attract or, or I was on a day that I tried to like dealing with a, like an average or below average looking chick. She still play games. You know why? Because women have loads of options. They, guys, I'm six foot three. I would say I'm pretty reasonably attractive. I'm in great shape. Guess what? There's other guys who are out, not, not many, but there are other black guys out there who are tall, who are in, who are in shape. See, way back when, before social media and, and, and uh, dating apps, a woman, the chance of a woman meeting a guy like myself, like in my area, will be slim to none. There's not a lot of guy, black guys who are six foot three who has everything going. But when she gets on her phone, she can put her preferences on a dating app. Like, I want a black guy who, or, or a white guy or a Hispanic guy who's six foot three and yada, yada, yada. So now she can interact and come into contact with a whole bunch of guys who are tall, fit, and in shape and successful. This is why a lot of guys are, are having trouble in a dating game. And, and I tell guys, it's a numbers game. It's, it's all a numbers game out here. Like, you can't even... It's such a numbers game. You can't... You, you have to literally... Let's say you have four dates this weekend. Let's say you got four women that you're going to get together and hang out with. Two on Saturday, two on Sunday. 
And today is Thursday. Don't stop talking to chicks. <laughs> this is how messed up the game is. You got four dates. Let's say you got all four women who say they're going to come over um, at different times on Saturday. On, let's say uh, let's say one chick on Saturday says she'll come over at 1 p.m. Another chick said 8 p.m. Then another chick on Sunday says uh, she'll come over at 2 p.m. Another chick says she'll come at 9 p.m. So let's say you got four women who are actually enthused to see you this weekend. Two on Saturday, two on Sunday. The game is so savage out here. You can't stop talking. To, you can't be like, oh, man, I got four chicks, so one of them going to pop through. No, do not do it. You got to literally keep going out and interacting and talking to chicks. Like, you got to literally, even if you have 10 women this weekend, bruh, just go out and talk to Because guess what? I've had been in a position. I have five chicks. Boom, flake. Bam, 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 bam. And I'm looking like, dang. So you guys got to understand the advent of, of, of phones and, and social media and everything like that, it's causing women to have huge egos. It's causing women to have uh, entitlement issues. And it's causing men to look like, man, I, am I that unattractive? Am I, am, I, am I a loser? Do I have not, not have any game? You got some no tall enough. Okay. But you got to understand, there is um, there's an abundance. Women have an abundance, so you have to have an abundance. Now, if you get that girl that, that's on your team and everything, that, that's, that, that you, you guys are mutually exclusive... Okay, that's perfectly fine, but even then, you still gotta be on your toe on your toes. Let me get some comments. Um, Love Valley says, when I was growing up, the grown black guys could work at a warehouse and drive a forklift and have a good looking black woman on their arm. But back then you could have a good life on 40, 50,000. You can still have a you can have a decent life on oh, a lot. You can have a decent life depending on where you live if you make forty thousand dollars. A decent one. Now, when you get to the 50, okay, cool. Like, if I'm if I'm living down south, because I think uh, Mississippi, shout out to all my uh, brothers from Mississippi, the income and, and the uh, the cost of living is, is, is the lowest in the country in Mississippi. As opposed to me living in Cali or me living in New York, the cost of living is through the roof. Right? So, um, and on top of that, shout out to... Uh, Jamil the King, Malev Elvis saying like you you can have a bad chick on your arm making forty fifty thousand. Now you make forty fifty thousand, you'll be lucky. Not, not it's not all tied to money. A lot of it is. You'll be lucky to get a, like a little piggy. You know. Uh, women are the catch and us men are the prize. Us men have been taught in reverse of women. Yep. Now I now I get what you mean by the numbers game. Got to keep the flowing like how they do men on dating apps. Like, here's the thing though, man. I mean, it, it when you're out there in the field and you guys are getting things flowing and you're talking to so many women, after so long, it could um it could get uh it could get very tiring. Because the reason why it gets tiring for us men, like I remember I was like really like got like chicks in rotation like how I, I was I was just really constantly out there I started to get headaches because you're talking to so many different women and they have different personalities so you're shooting your shot over here at Target you're shooting your shot at the gas station you're shooting your shot at, at the mall you're shooting your shot at uh at the dealership you're shooting your shot over on when you're walking on the trail and you're getting all these different numbers and you're trying to sift through and make them work boom 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 after so long, you're like, man, another chick flake. And you got it, boom, boom, boom. It's like it could, it could, it could start, it can really weigh on you. I'm gonna keep it real. It can really weigh you down. It does get tired. Of, guys don't understand. When you're out there in the field, you're a player, it takes a lot of discipline, it takes a lot of uh strength, mental strength, and work. It can be when I say it's overwhelming, man, it it's like sometimes I don't, I realize like how the heck did I do all that? It's a lot. It's a lot of energy. But on the positive side, you number one get the experienced women, and number two, you get a lot of uh, experience. You know, just just different options. But juggling a lot of women and trying to get them to come through, they flaking. You coming through, they flaking. You still still on the night? Oh, I gotta. It's like 
And the thing about it is, women, that's their zone. They play the game better than most men due to the fact that we're out there hunting. We're out there making things happen. We're out there, uh, you know, uh, getting things done in the world. Women, they just sit back and they just like, okay, let me just like string this guy along. Like, you got to understand, I talk to so many women and I text them like, so what you up to? Oh, I'm just laying in bed. And here I am working out at the gym. <laughs> or I like, uh, like I text a girl like, I'm like, uh, I'm at the, you know, I'm at the gym working out. What you up to? And they're like, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just sitting around watching TV. And you're going like, and then the chick's still playing games. You're like, bruh, this is why this digital social media age has gotten so bad, man. That's why I stopped cold approach and get tired of that. Um, Darius, what do you do as a career outside of YouTube? Also, I love your content. It will get exhausted and overwhelming trying to deal with women's experience. Experience is key because you know, you now know what to do with them. Yeah, that's the thing. Can't send my message, so please read it below. What's your message? Uh, hello, women assume the, that man wants sex right now when man approaches them or they don't think about it. Well, they know every woman um knows that you want sex. Every woman. And that's why some guys say, oh, just get to know her. No, dude, that's that's freaking pointless. You guys, you have to establish the, the, the situation. Now, you can ask her a few questions, you know, but anytime, anything after that, Bro, you you about to get yourself thrown in the friend zone. You about to get yourself um like you're wasting time because she already knows that she finds you attractive. So what's th there's guys and I know some dating coaches or so some guys are out there on YouTube that's telling you like, oh, don't be direct with women. So you're gonna be a passive uh, manipulator. Now you don't got to tell a chick, oh, hey, listen, listen, I'm trying to you meet her at the store. Hey, I'm trying to smash. You can just get her numbers and say, hey, let's get together and, you know, come over to my place. That That's the direct I'm talking about. You don't got to, like, show, uh, you know, pictures pictures of your pipe and everything. Just say, hey, let's get together, you know, let's play some cards. Let's let's have some wine. You know, let's, you know, come over to my place, watch a couple movies. That's that's the direct that I'm talking about. Too many guys are, tell, guys are telling you on YouTube, they're saying, oh, well, get to know her, ask her questions, make her comfortable, make that connection. Bruh, connection? Do you think, let me tell you something, guys. Do you think that, let's say a woman celebrity crushes Drake. Do you think in there, do you think she's thinking about making a connection with Drake? Oh, Drake, I got to get to know you. Hey, Drake, so where were you born? So what'd you like, what did you? If a guy is really attractive, he's like a model. If, do you think she cares about, oh, let me get to know you. Stop, st guys, you got to understand this connection. Here's the thing. Even if you want like to have a connection with a woman, bruh, don't do that. The connection happens when there's physicality. Boom. Now, if you want to have, you know, just have a conversation, you know, talk about whatever, but make sure you got to get sexual. She ain't getting no no Drake. She ain't getting no 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 celebrity. This why you guys got to treat yourself as celebrity because these women are will be playing you out here. The connection starts when there's. Physical attraction, that's the first connection. Because if she's not physically attracted to you, she's not into you, you could be talking about anything. You could be like, oh, so yeah, what you do for work? Oh, really? How long have you been working there? And you start talking about like uh, uh, promotions and, and uh, the company and what you do for work. You could be talking about for a good 30 minutes. Then you can say, hey, uh, we should get together and hang out sometime. Let's exchange numbers. Then she says, oh, you know, I got a boyfriend. Or, uh, I, you know, um, I'm, 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 I'm busy. I'm just busy for the for, uh, for a while. So you done talked to her for a good 30 minutes. And she laughed and everything. That's why you got to be direct, man. You direct. Because women, they don't mind just sitting there talking to you. You'll give off a ton of value. You start talking about goofy stuff. Exactly. Guys, you got to stand, man. It, it, we have, uh, he says, uh, um, I have manipulative coworkers telling me if you need you need to break the ass, meaning not be yourself and use pickup lines. One guy literally lies to women. I'm not about that. Yeah, you don't got a lot of women. 
Oh, somebody asked me, like, when I meet females, like, do I tell them my first name? Yeah, I tell them my name. Because they're like, oh, what if they find my channel? So what? Like, guys, it, since I have my channel for the past, what, four years? There's been, like, at least, man, it's been a lot of, it's been a, like, at least 15 different chicks. Like, that I was supposed to smash. Either I was supposed to get together and hang out and smash, or I smashed them, like, we hooked up and had sex, like, uh, two, three, four times we had something look consistent going and then they just happened to look me up on Google or something like that or oh, I should say on YouTube and they found my channel and they're like, oh, you know, I don't agree with what you said so I, we can't hang out anymore. All right, whatever. I don't even reply. I like, let's keep moving. Get, get another chick. Like for me, it's just straight. Like because I'm such in, a, in the public eye and I have a channel and I'm just everywhere, people reckon, women can... Spider easy. So me, I have to have an abundance mindset regardless. I can't even be like, oh, okay, I'm going to get to know this girl. No, nah, because she'll find my stuff and she'll start feeling some type of way. Even if it's the truth, she'll be like, oh, you know, man. And she'll dip off. Somebody said, what's the longest uh, What's the longest you dated a chick? Hit the super chat, I'll tell you that. 60 to 90 seconds of an interaction, uh, then directly keep it moving after giving her a number. Exactly. That's what I tell guys on the Patreon as well. Man, you're, you're, you don't got to sit there for 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, dude. 60 to 90 seconds at the most, you're good to go. Because then you, you have to understand, you don't have all that. If you're a busy man, you don't have all that time to be sitting there playing these games. These 49ers think they are all that. I have to tell a couple of them about themselves. That's the thing. Like, I did that too, D Hunter, where, like, I told, like, a chick that was, like, like average and looks like, I was like, I'm like better looking than you. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I, and I just went down a list and she's like, ha ha ha, whatever. Somebody said, what I want a son. You asked that question twice. Hit the super chat. I'll tell you that. Um, if she get turned off and, uh, um, so yeah, you, like just being in the public, I'd have a child like, my, like I do. Women are going to find that so quick because women are nosy. Right, so me, I always, I, I like, I'm, I'm, I'm basically in a lifetime of spinning plates. As long as I got a channel, as long as I got stuff out there, I, I have to spin plates 24 7, 365. So I have no choice. Nah, I got a main chick, she, she know about it, but a good not 99, 98 percent of women who found my channel, they was like, it's been like three women who found my channel who was like cool. But those three women, they always watch my stuff. They was always like, when I go live like this, they'll be watching the sitting. And if I say something like, oh, I'll, I'll talk to this one chick at the gym, they'll start feeling some type of way. Right? So my situations usually, they never last like that with chicks. So I'm in like, uh, I'm but it's my set by default. Uh, what made you start the game at uh, 14, age 14? And what were you like before the game? Um, what made me start the, the, uh, me getting into the game like this at age 14 uh, I lost my virginity at 14. And um, how I lost it, it was funny. Uh, I was over my uh, my cousin. He um, he was, he was like, I think he was like a, a couple few years younger than me. And he was like, um, you know, D, it's just, it's just one girl that I live by. Her name is uh, Natalie, right? And um, she was he was like, you should go talk to her. I said, all right. And that time I was a virgin. I was It was that summertime. I was 14 years old. And I had, uh, I, I, I knew about chicks. I, I didn't really know about, them. I, you know, I just like, you know, 14 years old, I was like, you know, um, a, co a few females liked me and was really, in, and was like into me in middle school when I look back at it, like, but they would like hit me and like, like, like push me or something like that. Or like, you know, so, you know, silly stuff. Um, cause that was the only way they knew how to shoot their shot. But I remember, um, at 14, I went to my cousin's house. He was like, you know, you should meet this chick. And then I had met her. But at the time, I didn't have no like good, like all those, a lot of different clothes. So I had put on my, <laughs> some of my cousin clothes. So um, I threw some nice retro Jordans. I forgot which number it was. Uh, nice little, you know, clean out, clean little shirt, pants. Went to her crib and um, I'm sweet sitting there. And I didn't know what to say. Like, I was just like, I was so like nervous. Because she was such a, she was a good looking girl. I mean, she was a good looking girl. For, for to be my first smash, I was like, 
good looking Hispanic girl. Y'all know who them, those Mexican chicks, Hispanic females be literally like freaks, right? So she was 14, I'm 14, and uh, I'm in her crib. And that's why I tell you guys, if a girl is into you, just going back to all the way when I was 14, like I didn't have to meet her at a park. She's like, yeah, you come over my place and everything. And because uh, her, her dad did some DJing and her mom was out doing whatever. She was like a flight attendant and her dad did some DJing. Um, if you guys, I, guys, I keep, guys, these guys just commenting. If you have a question at the Super Chat, I keep telling you guys that, man. Moderators, please monitor the, uh, the chat. Um, I might have to make another moderator. Somebody, Unique Mike, you're not even a moderator. I don't know why you wasn't. Unique Mike, you're a moderator. I don't know why, I thought I made you a moderator forever ago. Um, so, uh, so I'm, so we chilling everything and I'm sitting and she's like, you come up to my, uh, parents' room. So I'm in her parents' room. They got a king size, a California king size bed. And here I am, like, uh, I got some Jordan zone that's like, uh, two sizes biggest, bigger than mine. Cause I would, you know, look cool for the chick. And, um, uh, you're a moderator now, a unique mind. So he's sitting, I'm sitting there on the bed and I'm not, I'm not saying that cause I'm like, okay, I watch some porn, but I was like, okay, how do I, you know? Make it work. Because it's one thing to watch some porn or something like that. Or watch somebody do it. And then um, you got to do it. So we, I'm just sitting there. And it, I'm going to tie the whole uh, question up. You say, how do I get into the game at 14? And um, I'm sitting there. And she's like, uh, she's touching on my knee. And I'm like, all right, man. I got to do this. All right, what do I do? <laughs> and then she started kissing on me. And I'm like, and I'm kissing on her. I'm like, all right. So she get on top. And I was like, all right, you know, how do I, you know, uh, make this happen and um she basically knew what to do because she like she straight up knew what to do she you know i took my shoes off took my pants off she started giving me some hair i bust like that like man like quick and then she laughed a little bit and i was like you know kind of uh you know fucked up in the head and you know she got on top after that Bouncing on my dick, I bust, then I bust in her. Straight up and down. So somebody asked if I used a rubber. No, I used no rubber on her. And then after that, I smashed her again from the back. So then um, we did that basically for the for the, for uh, most of the summer. And um, I had tried to mix it up because I had played, I was playing AAU basketball at the time. And we went to Vegas. And um, we I was just I was over here playing this basketball tournament, this one, this one. Um so I was trying to get over there to my cousin's house, you know, and I didn't drive in time. So I would tell like my parents like, oh, I want to stay at this house for a little bit. So I was I would go over to his house for like a like a week and I just smash her. Like we'd meet up at the park at like at like midnight. Cause she'd sneak out of her crib. And then I sneak over to the park and we smash. It was just like jackrabbits. And it was just straight raw. And um what happened was how I really got into the game, because it was school was about to start. And I was like, you know, I told her, you know, I really cared about her like that. And I really want to be with her. You know, that was just a sex, you know. And um, she was like, you know, uh, you don't really love me like that. It's just a sex. And I was like, no, I really do. I really do. And it was, you know, it was it's good, good sex, man. You know what I'm saying? You go in there raw like that at that age and she that, you know. So um, after that, um, she was like, uh, it was, that was it. So I was like, man, um, are we going to see each other again? She was like. Uh, no, I don't think it's gonna work out. And I'm like, uh, you know, and I was just confused. So uh, I talked to a few guys, and it was like, you know, she jump off and yada yada yada. So that's how I really got into the game. Then I was like, I got a hit of that sex, and um, then I was start talking to girls like in school, and I was like, man, I gotta give me another, I gotta smash again because once I got like I got a hit of that raw sex consistently for the basically the whole summer or for most of the summer. I was like, man, I got to have it again because I, I didn't drive at the time. So I had the only way I could get like sex was in my school. So I was like, all right. So I started talking to different chicks when I was, you know, 14. And I uh, it was like the start of the school year. And um, it was like, I, I was just, you know, shoot my shot, being more social, yada, yada, yada. And I got a chick three weeks in, smashed her. And I was just, man, I just really just was just out there, just talking to chicks, trying to make things happen. Um, and, uh, it was just, that's how I really got into it because it, it was a good feeling being able to get a chick. And, um, <clears throat> somebody said no rubber crazy. Y'all guys, moderators, please monitor this chat. 
This is why I like doing memory live streams. When I have story time and guys are saying no rubbers crazy, yes, I smash chicks without rubbers. Yes, I, I mean, I'm quite positive you have, or if you have it, then that's on you. Right? So uh, somebody said how I didn't get her pregnant. I don't know. I was just, I mean, I was shooting blanks. And I remember it was one time I was like, and we was, you know, uh, I was pillow talking and everything. I was like, man, I'm, I'm trying to, you're trying to, you know, have my baby and everything. And this was 14, I was 14 years old. And I'm laying, I'm just chilling. And she had like, we had a blanket outside. And it was at the park at like midnight. I don't know how this girl to get caught up. Because she was just always hopping out of her window. So, um, so I was like, man, I want you, you know, uh, you're going to have my kid and everything. And I was talking about a son. I mean, this is me, 14 years old. Right? And this is how I really got into it. Because, um, like, a lot of guys, when they lose their virginity at 14... They smash one chick and then that's it. Maybe they'll smash her again. But it was like um, me smashing it, like just getting constant hit of, uh, of crack. Right? So that was the sprung talk. And um, somebody said, was uh, she on uh, birth control or or something like that? No, I, don't, I mean, I don't know. Oh, was she a virgin? No, she went, She definitely went a virgin because I found out she was getting smashed and everything. But um, all in all, how I got into the game like this is just... Uh, and, and, Female nature and, and getting women, girls is uh that's how it started. Cause then I just became like a jackrabbit, like trying to you know shoot my shot at this chick, this this and that. <clears throat> and over time, it ended up me from fourteen to now being thirty two. I talked to like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of women. Because and the reason why I did so much is because it got so easy. See, a lot of guys, most guys who are in here, you're like, man, Darius, that's like, that's draining. Or that's like, man, uh, how'd you get all those girls? It's because it gets so easy. So, like, if it's so easy to smash and hook up with women, and let's be honest, that's what most of you guys want to do. Once you have the blueprint, you just keep doing it. You, you just keep on doing it. You're like, well, I mean, I don't, I don't need to, like, be in a relationship. Because most, let's be honest, most guys, they get in relationships because they want consistent sex. So you have the blueprint in the game and the charisma and confidence to get sex like without being in a relationship. You're like, man, I got the, you're like, that's a cheat code. Because be honest, most men don't want to be in relationships like that. Most guys, they just want to, um, and GDB says, it's like catching a football. Yeah. It's like, you want to just keep doing it. You're like, man, this is easy. Then you hook up with another girl. You're like, yeah, it's easy. Because then you see all other guys that's, that's like uh, getting in relationships because they have to. Because they like, man, I want a girlfriend to get consistent sex. When you're able to get it without having a girlfriend and without like pain, that's like uh to like just in the game, that's a big achievement. Being able to get sex without having to pain. Or be it without at the point I'm in the game now, being a 32, I get sex and women actually pay me. Women actually like give me things, do do things for me, and I don't have to um pay for anything. Right, As, that just comes from uh, overall experience. So that's the that's the level I was at. I was just getting sex, and then after that, I'm like, man, it's kind of easy. Then I was getting sex, uh, and then girls start doing things for me. So basically, it was in a, in a way paying me to hook up and hang out with me. So I was like, man, this is great. I, I don't I don't gotta be like those losers over there. I don't like to be. I don't have to be like. Um, uh, those guys that that's getting abused and, and used in a in a relationships, right? And it's easy to like it's it's fun, and it's addicting to like have a chick come over, you smash, and you like you don't gotta like like go out. Like a lot of guys think like, man, there's you uh man, just invite her over to the crib, yeah. And when once you have a hit of that, you do it one time, you're like, man, I'm gonna do that again. You do it again, and you do it again, and you do it again. You just constantly do it. You're like, man, this is this is easy. I gotta leave my crib. And you just, right? So um, this is how I really got I got into the game. Um, and there's a lot of different layers uh, of the game, but um, it's uh, the game is uh, when I say game dealing with women because it's not like a manipulative manipulative. It's, it's the game is men and women um, interacting and uh, men doing what they got to do to get what they want. Women are doing what they got to do to get what they want. Love, love uh, the message, Darius. You ain't some overdose red pill. Oh, no, I'm not. The red pill is good, but a lot of guys, they don't apply tips. They don't use any advice to, uh, you know, when it comes to the red pill. They're just like, okay, um, 
the red flags, but they don't, they don't, they ain't really out here interacting and talking and dealing with women. I'm, I still got a main chick. I still, I'm still interacting with women. So I'm not like, I don't, I didn't overdose like a lot of dudes, even though it like overdosing it on the red pill can be, um, it could be addicting. Let's be honest, guys. Once like you see like a reaction video of like a female yelling at a uh, dude, and you're like, man, see, yeah, see, I ain't gonna deal with girls no more. Like I posted on the main channel today of a, like a, a, a female, um, what was it? A dude talking about um, about uh, him being divorced, and all type of dudes was kind of like, man, see, this is what's gonna make you go to monk mode. It's like, oh, I shouldn't have posted that video because it's a good reaction video, but at the same time, uh, my um, my brand is not about keeping you guys away from women. Now, I tell you to walk away from women who aren't benefiting you, who aren't giving you what you want, who are not respecting you. But all in all, my uh, content is geared more towards um, you knowing your value, you respecting yourself, and you doing what you got to do to get whatever interaction, or I should say situation you want from a woman. That could be a girlfriend. Some guys, they're not just with that hookup stuff. They're not trying to spin plates. Let's be honest. Most dudes ain't, let me say this. Most men are not built for rotation. Most men are not built to be uh, texting this girl, texting this girl, setting up this situation. Like, let's be honest. Most men in here are not built to have a chick that you're going to meet at 1 o'clock p.m. on Friday and then another chick at, at 7 p.m. Like, guys are like, man, that's a lot. Like, smashing this chick maybe and get some, get some rest, meet this chick at 7 o'clock, and then, like, guys ain't then on, on the next day in the morning. Like, the, most guys are built for long-term relationships. You're built for monogamy. And that's cool. Me, I can do both. Um, didn't mean any disrespect. Love your channel. I didn't realize you were only 14. Uh, yeah. One quality chick can be good enough. And that's the thing. I'll say that, Deshaun, Provado. One quality woman, and a lot of guys don't talk about this, man. Because they're, they're so like, she's not yours, it's just your turn. Yeah, we understand that. But still, at the same time, you got to have some sort of consistency. You have, you, got, you have to have some sort of consistency when it comes to women. And if you're just constantly pumping and dumping girls, that takes a lot of guys. It takes more energy pumping it up in girls than you, for you to have a main chick that you're grooming, that you're training, that you're able to mold. Right? Like me and my main chick, she don't give me no stress. She don't give me any headaches. I'm not saying she's a freaking blessing or something like that, but I'm just saying there's no headaches to issues. But with these other chicks that you try to fit into the fold and do this, this, and that, it's like, man. Y'all chicks ain't coachable. Y'all ain't cooperative. Y'all ain't compliant. It's like, do you start thinking about your main chick or your, your girlfriend or wife? Or if you y'all going that route, you start thinking like, man, I, I'm grateful for this girl. Now, again, you ain't like blowing her head up and, and, and it ain't like you ain't scared to get rid of her. But you start appreciating what your main chick actually does because she's actually bringing value and bringing things to your life, which a lot of guys, they're so... Um, fixated on, she's not yours, it's your turn. Yeah, we know that, but at the same time, you have to move past that uh, that red pill portion of life where you're thinking about, like, she's going to get ready to leave me. Well, if she does leave you, okay, cool. But every man is not, like, uh, built to be, uh, every man's not built to be a player. She's 99% your, uh, your piece. The 1% uh, she may be doing something goofy, but it's very, it's very spread out. Yeah, like uh, it's very spread out, and I, I think I got to start talking more about um, uh, having a main chick in relationships and and and, and situations because uh, it is a good experience. But too many men, and I talk about it more on Patreon. Too many men don't know how to uh, train and mold and groom a woman because no woman is high value until you make her high value. No woman is, 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 a, is a quality, high quality until you, to, to I make her high quality. So if she's compliant and she's cooperative, okay, she's able to be molded to be high quality. If she's, if she's not compliant and not cooperative, then she's not. She can't be. She, she's not teachable. Where do you talk about grooming women? Uh, on the Patreon, more so. Talk about that more. That will be refreshing. Yeah, because a lot of guys, um, and on the main channel, I, I like to do it on the Patreon because that's, you know, that's more, that's the top-notch game. But I give guys more, give guys that game the more sort of uh, in the, um, when I do consultations, because let's be honest, 
at the end of the day, every man will, well, if you're a straight guy, you're going to eventually want some consistency, especially as you get older. Like me being 32, yeah, you know, I'm still out there in the field, yada, yada, yada. But I can, I mean, it, after so long, it, there's a lot of wear and tear. Yes, there's good experience when it comes to being out here talking and approaching and interacting with women. But at the same time, there can be a wear and tear. So you got to kind of slow it down and ease it up. This is for guys as you start to get older. Right. And you still, and you've been in the game for a little bit. You're going to want you got to say, man, I mean, I want a little, little bit some consistency. But that means you like straight settling down your wife and the chick. It just means, hey, um, this deal, this girl I'm dealing with. She's cooperative. She's compliant. She's doing things for me. She's on my team. OK, cool. Now, again, she still can get fired at any moment. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, it's good to have some a consistent female around. Because when she's consistent and she's compliant, there you can start really training, grooming, and molding. If she's not, then you have to kick the curve. Thank you, uh, Deshaun Pravado. Somebody said finding a cooperative chick is hard. Yeah, I mean, it's... And I noticed back to the title, the reason why I found a, co a cooperative chick is hard is because she's not attracted to you. I'm going to say that again. We're going to dive into this, man. The reason why it's hard to find a cooperative, compliant chick who's able to be molded and trained, you know why? Because she's not 100% attracted to you. A woman has to see you as her number one option. Let's get into this, man. A woman has to see you, see me, as her number one option out of all the guys she's talking to, dealing with, hanging out with. Because then she's like, oh, this is the best I can do. This guy is that attractive. So, excuse me. So, okay, I'm going to follow him now. Because if you're like number three, she's looking at you like, uh, that's where the medium to low interest comes in at. When she's like being flaky and wishy-washy. Because you're not the best she can, in her mind, you're not the best she can do. You're not, you're not the, uh, the prize that she sees, that she has up there, number one. So she'll listen to him and cooperate and, and be his high value uh, chick. If he knows how to, if he knows what he's doing, he knows how to mold her. But if you're like number three or four, even if you're number two, she's like, uh, she's still going to be flaky. She's still going to be wishy-washy. This is why if you're, guys, your looks, I keep telling y'all this, man. Don't listen to these dating coaches that's telling you, yes, looks get you in the door. But, you know, game and behaviors and matters, that'll keep you there. Because you, you can be a good looking guy to her, but then you can start doing double, triple texting. Now she got rid of you. You can be a good looking, like, attractive, fit guy. But then you start like, uh... Uh, you know, sweating her about, hey, who you talking to? Then she's going to reject you, right? But looks get you in the door. Your game doesn't get you. You can be a, an unattractive bum. Then you try to shoot some game, you have a mouthpiece, guess what? She was like, uh, I'm good. Because physically, you don't fit what she's looking for. So it all comes up, I keep telling you guys, look at your face, look at your hand, look at your teeth. Look at your body. Literally, look at, stand in the mirror naked and look at yourself. No homo. Look what you need to work on. Maybe you're going bald. Now shave your hair bald. Maybe you, you know, whatever you have to do because that's what gets you in the door. Because when you look good, you feel good. And guess what? Women go off your vibe. So if you're walking tall, feeling good about yourself, about how you look, she's more up to want to deal with you and want to be able to be molded. Because trust me, women are looking for guys who uh, they can submit to. It's natural for women. Don't get uh, don't get it twisted where she's like, oh, well, you think, oh, she's strong and independent. No, women are looking for guys to submit to. She just has to be physically attracted to you. And that's where it starts off at. When she's attracted to you, when you're her number one option, above all the other guys that she's talking to or dealing with, it's going to be easy. It's, and here's the thing, going back to what I was saying, being direct with women and telling them to come straight over, that's how you know you're, if you're not her number one option. I personally don't want to be a 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10. Because if I invite you straight over to my crib that and you come over and you're happy and excited, I already know I'm your number one option. I already know. On top of that, if I tell you to come over to the crib, you know, and she says, okay, I'll bring the wine. I say, oh, straight up? Okay, cool. I'm your number one option. This is how you know. Because she's going to be on board. She's not going to flake. She's not going to cancel. She's not going to say to reschedule. She's not going to play any games. If she's your number one option, 
Oh, she if you're her number one option, what's going to happen is she will just... Bro, y'all have to understand, and a lot of guys haven't maybe dealt with it. Some some of you might have like one or two chicks, but when a girl's your number one option, she don't make no excuses. This is why I laugh like when I tell chicks like, "Oh, come over, you know, let's watch a couple movies and uh, have some wine." They'll be like, "Oh, I don't I don't do house calls like that." Sorry, I don't even reply back. You know why? Because I've had a string of women, and I've had a lot of women, and I'm going to continue continue to have women who are going to just come over and who are going to be excited to hang out with me, and they ain't gonna say none of that. So, like, I don't even reply. I don't even get upset. It's just like, okay. I don't even say anything. And then some chick's like, hey, did I say something to upset you? I just don't even reply back. Or they'll say, so, um, like, uh, hey, hey there. Are you okay? I just don't reply back because I know what you're basically saying to me is I'm not number one on your list. Because if I was number one on your list, sweetheart, Becky, uh, Jasmine, Alexis, whatever the chick name is, if I was number one, you wouldn't mind coming straight to my crib like that. Matter of fact, you'll do it with a smile. Matter of fact, you'll ask, so what should I wear? Matter of fact, you'll ask, so what should I bring? This is, this is where you want to be in a woman's eyes. This is why, guys, I'm, I'm just straight direct. Because all that's going to do is just let, her, let me know right away, oh, that girl ain't feeling me like that. Even if, guys, his thing, even if she does, like, let's say hypothetically come straight over to your crib, women will do that. And then y'all hang it out. She's like, oh, I don't have sex on the first date. Okay. That means I'm not your number one option. So, yeah, you came over, but you ain't trying to put out. Okay. You do have sex on the first date. It's just not with me because I'm not your top choice. I'm probably your second choice. And that top choice guy that you're dealing with or, or, or talking to, you'll give it to him. So, okay, cool. I don't even get upset about the game because, again, it is the game. And once you guys really understand the game and how women think and how women operate and how they choose guys who they hook up with and have sex with, I don't even, you, you wouldn't even get upset. Because this thing, I don't even want to try to manipulate or try to run all this game on a girl. Because I don't want to, like, force her to put me in the number one. I just want you to be like, okay, cool. I'm attracted to this guy. You know, he has a, a pretty, you know, laid back, cool personality. I ain't trying to be like all in your ear, yada, 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 da, 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 and then, no. I ain't speaking different language to you, so hopefully I can be your number one. No, just listen. Uh, you, let, let's get together. We can have a good time, yada, yada, yada. Girls who like you, shout to Sean Bravado, they're going to make it easy on you. Girls who don't like you, they're going to make it hard. For every guy who's listening, if a girl is into you, she's going to make it so freaking hard easy and again disclaimer she can like you but you be you might be her number two or three on the list so if you tell her to come over to the crib let's hang out first time she will say no i gotta meet you in public or i, or I, or I gotta uh, get to know you first but if that number one guy says hey come over to the crib she will say oh okay cool i'm coming you see you see the difference number one versus number guy number guy number two number three on the list who, who uh that's you she treats guys different. If she's attracted to you 100%, boom, whatever you say goes. And the reason being is she doesn't want to mess up that situation. I'll say that again for, for the guys in the back. <laughs> when a woman is into you guys, she's going to follow your lead and she's not going to mess up the situation because she knows she won't be able to get a guy who's number one to replace you. So if you're number one in her eyes, what's going to happen is she's got to roll with the flow. She's going, she, okay, she's not going to be flaky. She's not going to be wishy-washy because she knows that that number three, she's like, man, that dude can't, re he can't replace Darius. So that number three, uh, I might as well, she just, it's going to be like an autopilot. She's like, okay. She's not even going to think about like, should I go to this place? No, she's going to be like, oh, I'm, I'm attracted to this guy. I'm, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm head on, I'm going in. But if you're like number three or four or two or whatever, she's going to play those games, man. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling you how women work. She's going to follow your program genuinely. Um, I felt like I was talking for like 20 minutes. <laughs> like nonstop. I felt like I didn't get a breath.
Guys, if you'd like to contribute via PayPal, Cash App, or Venmo, all 100% proceeds will go to me. There's the links. You was cooking. Thank you, Unique Man. I'm, I'm telling you guys, if, if, if the, the reason why women see you, the reason why, let me say this. Why you guys are having issues with women, this is what it comes down to, okay? Uh, this is going to sum up all these dating coaches' videos. All these guys, what they telling you. Do you want to know the reason why you're not having quote unquote success with women? Or you want to know the reason why you're having trouble with women? Or you might be talking to two, three, four women right now and you're just having issues with them. You want to know why? Huh? Huh? You don't want to you want to know why you're you guys are struggling and you're frustrated with women? I'm gonna tell you why. Y'all ready? This this is a cause for a drum roll. The reason why you're mad and frustrated with women. You ready? Because you're dealing with women who don't like you. This is why women flake on you. This is why they don't give you sex. This is why I say we got to get to know each other. You know why? Because they don't like you. They don't like you. So it seems like they like you when you guys are texting. It seems like that a woman is into you when she tells you, good morning, handsome. But you try to get together and hang out with her. She's giving you the runaround. You know why? And you're frustrated. You know why? Because she doesn't like you. And it's, it's, it's hard to decipher as a man like, wow, we exchanged numbers, we're talking, we even FaceTime, we video chatted. She even sent me pictures of her boobs. She said she sent me a few pictures of her. Why she don't want to hang out? You know why? Because she doesn't like you. And because she's doing it to multiple dudes. Now you want to know why I tell you to tell chicks, oh, just tell her to come straight over. You want to know why I tell you guys that? Because instantly it lets a woman, it lets you know if a woman is into you. Direct, straight approach. See, I figured out the game a long time ago, and I know women. Over the years, I figured them out. They can lie to you. They can play you. They can talk to you on the phone for hours. They, they can t talk about, oh, all this sexual stuff. But then you say, let's hang out. Guess what? Oh, I'm busy. Oh, I can't make it. Oh, I, we got to reschedule. You know why? Because she doesn't like you. She just likes your attention. This is why, guys, you got to be quick to cut women off. Women, shout out to uh, Mr. Ricky Jackson. They will move mountains for guys who they really like. It's just that simple. Some new chick that really digs me, irritate, initiates every single contact and, ha and has offered taking me out for dinner. Exactly. See, let me, let's me let get into this, man. Shout out to Churchill, uh, Churchill Hall. Um, this is why it's important for you to not go totally black pill or hate women. You know why? Because the, the reason why you hate women because you're dealing with women who over the years who just didn't like you, man. They just liked your attention. If you have a question, hit the super chat, man. And it's messed up. And you're like, man, man, these girls. No, they. There are some that really like you, because the ones, the ones that really like you, they're not gonna make you pay for sex. They're not gonna make you take them out on all these dates. They're gonna, they're not gonna say, oh, I gotta get to know you more. Oh, um, you're, we're moving kind of fast. They're not gonna do that to you. They're not. And I know it's hard, man. Because guess what? It's been times, I'm going to be honest, guys. I'm talking to like, I've talked to, I've talked to and approached like 25 chicks. 
like straight up and down, like 20, 25 chicks. And then we exchanged numbers and contact information. Guess what? They, they didn't want to hang out. They was kind of wishy-washy. Or they was like, oh, you know, um, how about we meet over here instead? And you're like, and then on the 26 female that I approach or talk to, I, and I guess what? I stay with this. And I, I talk about more on the Patreon. I'm not going to get too much into that depth. But I stay with the same regimen. And on that 26 female, guess what? Okay, I'll come over. Do you need me to bring anything? And then it comes to my mind. I was like, you know what? See, I'm glad I stuck with my, I'm glad I stuck to my program and plan. Because those 25 other chicks, they weren't into me like that. And that's, and that's totally cool. I still shot my shot. I still did all that. But those 25 other chicks, they weren't really into me. They were talking about, oh, we should meet over here instead. Let's, how about we go up for drinks instead? What you mean? I got a bottle of wine at the crib. Oh, uh, I want to go for a drink. Let's go. How about we go to this bar instead? It's really cool. No, I'm not going to the bar. I'm not doing what you want because I'm inviting you into my world. You better be glad I got this bottle of wine that we can share. And if you don't want to do that, then that means you didn't like me. You did not like me. But guess what? I get that a 26 female. She's, oh, okay, cool. Guess what? We hang out, have a good time because she has high interest. So she comes straight over. She has, do you want to be bringing things? You want a snack? You want something? I said, oh, okay, see? There we go. I found it. She really likes me. The 25 other women just didn't. And some of them, they might have liked, liked me somewhat, but again, I wasn't their number one. I only want to be a woman's number one. And if I'm uh, her number three or four, and I can tell if I'm like her three or four or, or however many dudes on the list, I can tell. I can tell which number I'm on the list. I, you know why? Because if she ain't jumping head over heels, if she ain't ready to hang out with me, then I'm not number one. <laughs> so I can be number two, 20, 50, 100, a million. That's why you guys got to be selfish, man, with your time. Shout out to Unique Mind. Too many guys are not selfish. They're just like, okay, well, I'll, I'll take my time. You got to be selfish with your energy and money. Like when I say selfish, because guess what? Women are selfish all the, with their energy and money and time, especially when it comes to money. They ain't giving y'all nothing. They ain't giving y'all nothing. Somebody said soaking up game. Listen, I'm giving you all this game. It's all about getting the right girl who supports and respects you. Exactly. Now, some guys, they might get that. Like when they, they approach the first chick in their life and they got that girl who's down. Now, the chance of that happening is it's rare. But a lot of guys want to get out here in this field. But here's the here's the uh, the kicker as far as being out here in, in the field like that. Once you get that taste of that one woman who like head over heels, who's doing all this stuff for you, you get a little greedy. You're like, man, I got this chick right here. Let me see if I can get out there and get a one more chick. And then let me, let me see if I can, you know, duplicate this thing. Let me see if it's a girl that's going to do more. That's where the quote unquote hypergamy for us men come into play. See, women are just, they have it innately built in them. Hypergamy comes, that, that gene comes in where you already got that type of chick. And you're like, man, I, 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 I didn't think I was going to happen. Then you get back out there again. You want to see if you can replicate it. Then you get another girl like that. You're like, man, let me. So you want to have as many as you can on your team. <laughs> on your team. Right? So um, yeah. Should you ever tell that one girl who's attracted to you and take care of you that you love her. Um, you can tell her that if she, if she, um, if you tell her, uh, excuse me, if she tell you like, Hey, uh, I love you. Then you can say it afterwards, you know, say I love you too. It's no big deal, but understand, remember, you still got to understand and apply the principles and understand female nature. She loves the way you make her feel. So you can tell her that as long as she tells you first, I'm not telling you what, you know, if she tells you, oh, I love you, Darius, I love you, babe. You're like, all right. Yeah, I'll tell her, I love you too. But understand, 
Listen, I know the game. I, I just, listen, I'm human. It's guys, yeah, you don't have to be like a, a staunch, like red pill guy, like rah. Now you can tell her that, but understand you still have to stay up on game. You still have to watch a whole bunch of you gotta consume content every day. You can't like be like, okay, yeah, there's you preach some good stuff, but I I'm in a little relationship now, and then um, you know, I'll be back. Then she do you dirty, like, man, see, I told you these chicks. No, you gotta stay in the you gotta stay in the church, man. You cook it tonight. Shout out to Mr. Uh, ben Baker uh, for contributing to the church. Big shout out to Ben Baker. Love you, brother, for contributing to the church, man. See, this is why I like just getting up here and kicking game to you guys, man. No panel, no none of this stuff. Um, Somebody asked a question. Hit the super chat. Bob Spence, is it a good strategy? Approach them, give them my number, and forget about them. Um, Here's why um, you can go to everyone and say, hey, all right, text me. But women, a lot of times when you approach her because you're you're uh, uh, you're just a guy that she just met, what's gonna happen is if you give me your number, she'll be like, oh, um, uh, I don't know if uh, if I should I text them first because women overthink everything. As a man, this is why I tell you guys: unlock your phone, boom, 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 and then you give it to her, and you guys exchange numbers. Or she shoot me. She give you her number. You say, "Hey, all right, cool. I'm gonna shoot you a text later." That's cool, because at the same time, she still when you do the approach she, and you pop your phone up, you say, "All right," and then she give you her number. She give you her number. She put it in herself because she's actively participating in the interaction in the approach. Then she give the phone back to you. Say, "All right, cool. I'm gonna shoot you a text later," and you go about your business. And he, then you text her later. That's cool, because if you put all the weight on, if you put everything on a woman's shoulders for like, yeah, like give her your business card. Say, "All right, text me." Call me. You know what she's going to be thinking about? She's going to be thinking like, uh, what should I call him? Should I text him today? Should I text him right now? Like, will he like me? Like, women are extremely insecure. Y'all think uh, men are have, like, lack confidence and have low self-esteem? Women are extremely insecure. So, they, they uh, you can be the, I don't want to say be the pursuer. You can initiate, but then once you initiate, she'll feel comfortable with talking to you now. This is why, like, hypothetically, let's say, like, you guys are on dating apps still and those little things. What happens when, like, you match with a chick, let's say on Tinder or whatever dating app? She'll let it sit there. That's because she doesn't want to feel like, oh, man, like, uh, uh, you know, will he reject me? Because women take rejection way harder than men. So if you say, hey, how's it going? And then she'll, boom, reply back. Like, there's been times where I used to be on Twitter or these dating apps. And then we'll match with a chick. And I'll just sit there for like two days. It will sit for two days. And I say, man, let me just message her. So I say, hey, what, hey, how's it going? Literally like a minute later, she said, hey, what's up? And, and that's just how women are. They're um, they're very extremely passive aggressive. They're, they're, they're scared chicks, man. Uh, Deshaun says how to approach girl when her friends are with her. I talk about that on the Patreon. Uh, feed you the phone. Keep looking out for us, brother. Shout out to Robert A. I talk about more on the Patreon. Um, become a, a, a patron on the next level game tier. Because if I if I give y'all too much game, you know, get on the Patreon or email for a consultation, man. Uh, guys, I got a lot of stuff. A lot of y'all questions, like the in depth stuff, is, is more on the Patreon. Um, where we at? I was at work and seeing the girl and she made her friends change seats to keep her eyes on me. Energy was wild. Yeah, that's the thing, man. A lot of, uh, um, but if you want to, um, approach a girl, if she with her friends, basically, um, you know, you got to get her away. I'll just say that you got to get her away from her friends. All right.
Yeah, so um, uh, being up front with women, and guys, make sure you support the streams. I appreciate the guys who donated to the church, Robert A. Shout out to uh, TJ McAvoy Jensen. Um, the, the best approach with women is just like, just straight up like, and, and this is going to take probably some time for y'all to get older. Like, to get for you to just be, dealt with enough women, and you say, man, forget it. I don't got nothing to lose. You're like, man, I'm tch. hey, you, you trying to hang out? Like, a lot of guys, like, when I was younger, well, I'm still young. Like, when I was in my early 20s, just getting really into the game like that, like that. Um, And I think, I, I was like, I would, I would, like, text girls for, like, like two, three days. Then I would say, hey, you want to hang out? And I'd be wasting so much time. Or I'll be texting a girl a lot, like, that for that day. Like, we'll text, like, 60, 50, 60 times each, like, just, oh, like, a whole text thread that whole day. Then I try to say, hey, let's hang out. Then she, like, declined. Or he said, I'm kind of busy. And it's like, man, I kept get, hitting those roadblocks. I said, and like, I think it was like my early, early 20s, like maybe 21, something like that. I said, man, forget it. I'm just going to tell chicks, let's get together and hang out. So I like asked the chick, like, so where you live? And then um, I was like, oh, cool. Hey, let's uh, let's hang out. When are you free? So uh, when I was like 20, 21, 22, I used, to, I, used to phrase, I, used, I used to use the phrase, hey, when are you free? Let's get together and hang out. So I transitioned from texting a whole bunch and talking on the phone to like, man, this ain't getting nowhere. I'm wasting time. Then I transitioned my early 20s to, so hey, when are you free? Let's get together and hang out. Like the fourth, fifth message. Then I started realizing when I was using that, girls would tell me, oh, I'm not free this week. I'm free next week. Or like they'll say, I'm not free this weekend. I'm free next weekend. So I said, man, uh, I got to cut this down. So in my mid-20s, I started to say, okay, cool. So as my, my game is constantly evolving. So I said, okay, since today is what? It's, today is Thursday. I'll tell a chick, I wouldn't ask her, so when are you free? I'll say, do you have any plans for tomorrow and Sunday? So then I box them in. So they would have to be no, they couldn't say like, oh, or they could say, oh, I'm busy uh, tomorrow, but I'm free Sunday. You see how it is? So then I say, okay, cool. And then boom. Or if they say, oh, I'm busy those days, I just then I just wouldn't reply back. Right? So over over the and who who knows why I'm gonna be at 35 years old, right? Because women are always evolving and changing. So us men gotta evolve. So um you all when you're dealing with women, you should always uh look for new ways to be successful, look for new ways to uh have the 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 the, the situation that's gonna work in your favor because women are selfish themselves. So if you don't put yourself first and your needs first, man, they're going to eat you up. And I'll say this, women actually enjoy and, and they value men who put themselves first. Um, trial and error until we learn, uh, until we learn a different, uh, different, until we learn a different effective method. Yep, that's what it's about. That's what game is really about, guys. Trying different things over and over again. This is why when I get, when I uh, upload videos on the main channel, on the Patreon, and I share you with you guys this wisdom. These are all the things that I've done over and over again. Well, like, I didn't just try it on like five women and that's it. No, I've, I've tried. It's been dozens of women that I've tried these things on, that I've texted, that I've said these things to. So I got the intel and I said, okay, cool. This worked this time, this time, this time. So I won't just try it with a black chick. I'll try it with a white chick. Then I'll try it with like a Hispanic chick. Then I'll say, okay, this, this actually works. So then. I just bring the information back to you guys and share with you guys and, and make you guys' life easier. Shout out to Brother Ralphie. Um, where we at? I have women say that I am selfish with my wants and needs, but their actions show that they love it. Yeah, man, I'm a selfish. Listen, I'm a dog, man. Now I'm I'm, a, I'm not a like a. I'm a law. <laughs> Let me say this, but before I like get into the dog, I'm a law-abiding citizen. I'm not out here like, uh, you know, doing people harm and like, uh, doing uh, you know domestic violence. I'm not doing none of that to that. Now, when I say I'm a dog, I'm a dog up here. I don't have to lift a finger. Right? That's why you guys should learn from pimps. Pimps don't have to lift a finger. 
Now, there are some gorilla pimps that be on that, but most pimps, they don't have to lift a finger because they know women. They know how they think. They know how they process. So I am a dog. I'm a, I'm a literally an animal up here. I, I would never have to lift a finger on a chick ever. All right. I give you a silent treatment because this is why the silent treatment is so important. They're not expecting you to not reply. Right? Women aren't expecting you to not like quit, like get mad at them because our testosterone is so high. We're so masculine, especially me as a black man. Because I'll be honest, you know, us black men, we have a reputation for lashing out and lunging out and rah, 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 rah. so when I don't do that at all, women are like, what the? And they just gravitate towards me even more. Because they're not used to a, a calm, stoic black man. Now, I'm not saying every black man is, but I'm, I'm just speaking for myself. That's what most black men are. They're just out there. They're like, ah, you know. I have women say that I am... Uh, Guys, make sure you like the stream. Give it a thumbs up before we continue. Go ahead and like the stream. We go, let's take some calls, man. Cause we was, I, was, I was just cooking. See, that's what I'm saying. I, I cook for 90 straight minutes. I didn't even realize it. I'm just going and going and going, and then boom. Call the show, 630-618-7110. Hope you don't die. I always forget to charge my phone because I'm doing so much throughout the day. Oh, I want to cover a quick topic. Um... There was this guy, uh, Darius Morris. Has, has anybody heard of him? He played for the uh, Michigan Wolverines, and he uh, he got drafted uh, in the NBA. He played for a little bit. He went overseas, but uh, uh, he was caught on camera literally annihilating practically his girlfriend. Now, I don't want to bring it up in here because they'll get demonetized, but it would definitely get flagged up most likely. But this 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 guy, um, and you guys should go look it up. I might have to put it on my Patreon. I probably probably won't because I don't I don't you know they'll they'll they sensitive on the, on the, on these platforms, man. And I built too much to get it to get stuff thrown off. But um, this guy Darius Morris, he beat up his girlfriend, and this is why I tell you guys. Meditate, man. Relax. Breathe. Because too many guys, they're running on emotions. This is why you got to be careful when you in love, when you get with these women. Now, I'm not saying the, the female made him do it or she was cheating, but the fact of the matter is you have to control your emotions at all times. If a girl flakes on you or cancels the date, don't go uh, being angry and frustrated and yelling in a rage. If a girl is probably cheating on you or, or messing around with dudes, don't be enraged or or frustrated or angry. Don't try to don't do it. Don't, listen, you guys got to practice walking away from women. This is why I, I enjoy meditating every other day. Like meditation has been my best friend for many, many years. I should say for the past couple years. I, I got into it about four years ago, but the past couple years I've really been meditating because being stoic will always keep you in a logical uh, mindset. Once you start arguing with a woman, you fall into her frame. Once you start yelling at her, fall into her frame. Once you start you know, going back and forth and debating with a woman, fall into her frame. This is why I don't, I don't debate, I don't argue, not one female. Because I'm not getting anywhere. Because if I tell a woman, to, as a male, if I'm telling a woman to do something and she doesn't want to do it, okay, fine, you're going against my word. I'm not going to, you're not listening. You're not cooperating. So, see you later. When I just to the example... Extreme ain't no chick won't uh, worth a try. Yeah, now his money gone. He, he uh, I don't know if he was really 
doing much like that. But he, uh, no, no female is worth any of that. No female is worth you taking a charge for. No female, no female on this planet is worth your life. None is worth your freedom, because it's not just him being incarcerated and his having his day in court. But now with social media, his name is everywhere. So where he gonna work? Where he gonna get a job? Where where is he gonna? You know how he gonna eat? Now hopefully he he saves us some bread, but. I mean, everybody knows you. The world knows. And y'all know Instagram has like, yeah, like a hundred, hundreds of thousands of likes where he's going crazy and beating his chick. That's why guys, man, even here's what women will do. I'm not, I'm not blaming, uh, I'm not blaming women, but women will be, there's, two, there's always, there's two sides to every coin. This is why you got to be calm and, and, and remain even keel at all times with women. And above all, you got to uh, deal with women who only cooperate and comply. Also, if you feel that, man, if she, she's, she's probably messing around, do let her sleep around. Keep it moving. But that's what happens when you get like a, if a, I'll say this, Darius Morris, if he was just an average dude, he like if he didn't go to the NBA or anything like that, or he didn't really have any sort of pedigree or, or reputation or you know resume, he wouldn't be able to get that chick. So those Instagram model or Instagram uh, influencers, they're they only want you because you got some money. They're literally parasites. Like what Instagram influencer, what or I don't even call them Instagram models, what Instagram model slash influencers are on there to make you happy? I'll say that again. What Instagram model and influencers are on, on, on social media to make you happy? Instagram, I should say. None. They don't care about they, they care about hey, you you give me some money. Dude, she will leave you while you in jail, prison. It happens a lot, military, dear, dear John. Cooperation and respect makes makes life much simpler. Exactly, but there's not a lot of women who, who gonna give you that uh that cooperation respect. So little TV the forces. How the pogs treating you these days, bro? I see you killing on Snapchat. Um. Uh, oh, I'm great, man. I, I wouldn't expect this little TV to pop in here, man. Um, I'm I'm doing, man. I'm doing great. Everything is wonderful. Uh. You know, the, the channel's growing. I think I'm at, what, 100 and... I, I, am I approaching... Let me see. I'm approaching, what, 184,000 subscribers? Uh, Something like that? Yeah, so, uh, listen, we, we growing. I'm approaching, what, 184? No, prom, no promotion, what, no interviews? I mean, no nothing. So, uh, the Pog Slayer uh, is in full effect. If y'all don't know what a pog is, uh, fat ass uh, white girls. I hope I, I might have to blurt that out so it can be monetized. But uh, everything is going great, man. I think what what caused most of all oh, he didn't hit the super chat. Shout out to Solo TV eighty four. Great to see you, man. Wouldn't expect you here. Um, cooperation and respect makes life much simpler. That's why I tell you guys, guys. If you're not like you has, if, if you're not getting hundred percent cooperation from a chick, what's gonna happen? Shout out to Solo TV eighty four. She's got to make your life hard. Like right now, like, like I, I wish you guys could see. And I sometimes I put like my chick on my my main chick on my Snapchat here and there. Like guys, when I when we go out, like when y'all see me at like the hibachi place or whatever spot, she's paying for that. Like she a hundred percent of the time she's paying for those things. That's because if a woman is truly down for you. She's gonna break. She's gonna pull out her, her purse, or she's gonna break the bank. That's why I tell you guys, majority of you are in situations with women where you're paying everything, and when she leaves you, you're confused. That's because she never really liked you. I keep telling you guys, man. If women, 
majority of guys are with women who don't like them. They just like what you are, are, are doing for them. And every woman will, will do that. Like every single woman will break bread on a dude. Every woman on this planet will break bread and spend money on a guy. You just have to be her number one. A lot of you guys are the number five, six, 10, 20, 100, two, whatever. So if you're there, guess what? Listen, you gotta, you gotta get a different girl. I only wanna be, let me say this. This is the type of mindset you guys need to have. Let's say you're talking to 10 women right now. You got 10 women in your phone. And you're not the number one. You're like number two, three, two, four, five, six, five, two, three. Would you rather have those chicks, those 10 chicks where you're trying to build some sort of like interest in them? Hopefully you're number, they're number one. Or would you rather have that one female who views you as that top dude who's doing all type of stuff for you? Who's showing up on time, who ain't flaky, who's consistent. Those 10 chicks who you, you're not the number one and you, you're hoping that you can text them into liking you or you're hoping that you can like spit some game and hopefully you can get to number one in her list. Or would you just have to have that number one that she views you as that top dude? That's what I'm saying, guys. You guys have to start dealing with women who actually genuinely like you. <laughs> and it might be hard for some dudes, but there, guess what? There's women who actually are into you. There's a small percentage, but when you get when you get that woman, cool, you run with it. But she's always on probation. <laughs> right? I respectfully and co-op one respectful and cooperative woman. Yeah, you don't need negative people in your life. Words from David Goddard. Yeah. You guys got to get rid of those, those women who... And here's what happens. A lot of dudes, they keep women around because they look so good. And in your eyes, you're uh, she's your number one choice. But in her eyes, you're not her number one choice. So that's why there's always going to be that friction. That's why when y'all like... When you try to hang out and set something up, she's going to be like kind of wishy-washy. Now, I'll say this. Sometimes you can start out as, start out as her number one. But then, you know, you might do some beta week stuff that you can drop down, you know, off the list. But you generally, I'll say this, generally, if you're a woman's number one, I noticed over the years, you usually stay there. Like, until, like, you just, like, want to, like, say, man, I'm done with you. Like, if you're a woman's number one option, she'll put up with a lot. Like, you can say a lot of, like, man, you can say a lot of silly stuff. Then, And that's where the, the, uh, the phrase comes where guys, like, Man, if I can't be myself around a woman, then I don't want her. Right. So I can be myself around the ch the, the chick and, and and say things and do stuff if I'm a number one, as long as I ain't like no really needy beta stuff. Because I'm her top choice and she, and she the chances of her replacing me is slim to none. This is why we always talk about self-improvement, guys. Because once a woman views you as the top guy, man, you say a lot of like, you're like, shut up. <laughs> She like she shut up like all right, but if you tell a chick like that that um, let's say you're like number three on her list, you tell her to sh yeah, shut up. She'd be like, boy, what you talking about? Bye, boy, bye. Y'all know how those black chicks be. And then she dip off and move, and she like you like what the heck going on? Right, like so, <laughs> it's a real difference when like when you're a chick's number one guy, and she genuinely likes you. Man, dude, it's like night and day. Like, you sleep better. She She's thoughtful. She's trying to bring you stuff. She's like, yo. Uh, like, a girl who views you as her number one that likes you, what's going to happen is she's going to think about, like, she's going to plan things. I talk about this more on my Patreon. She's got to plan outings. Like, it's what, April right now? My main chick, she's trying to, like, plan uh, a flight to uh, Vegas or something like that. She's like, yeah, we should go to Vegas. Like, she's thinking about, yeah, like, let's go to Vegas. Why, you know, I'm like, all right. And she's talking about that in June. That's April, May, June. That's like a couple months, two, three months. 
When a girl's interested, she got to plan things. You won't have to like, oh, she coming over this weekend, so I got to think of stuff to do. What I got to do? I, I, I don't want to lose her. And I've been with women like that. They was really good looking. And I'm like, man, okay, I, I, I got to plan something to do this weekend so she can like see me as so exciting and fun. Then each weekend I have to plan something new, a different spot. I couldn't go to the same bar. I'm like, okay, we've been to that bar. I got to go to another spot. And then another weekend, another spot. Until I was like, waste. I was like drowned. I was spent. I was like, man, okay. His thing, if you're the, a girl's number one uh, main chick, her main choice, what's going to happen is y'all could just be here on Friday, sitting down, just eating a pizza, chilling, watching a movie. You don't got to worry about oh, what I, I got to take it this weekend. I got to plan something. Uh, well, what if uh, what if she don't like where I took her? Now, don't get me wrong. You don't got to be a hermit with your chickens and sit in the crib. But at the same time, you're not going to be so pressed to try to keep her. Like, okay. If a woman views you as her top choice, you, she's going to be worried about keeping you. You're not going to be worried about keeping her and try to like entertain her. That's how you know that you're at a different level of the game because you're not you're not going to be like, oh man, I gotta what what if she uh, walk away from me? I, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. I be having consultations with all types of dudes around the globe, man. They always have that like, and the common a lot of the common themes is a uh, uh, how can I get her back or how can I. Like right the ship, man. I did all this for. It's like, yeah, cause you, you're her number one. Excuse me, she's your number one, but you're not her number one. Deal with women who like you. The sex gonna be free. <laughs> I'll say that again. Deal with women who like you. Be around women who genuinely like you. The sex will be free and it will be much more fun. And she's going to be looking to please you. Women who don't like you, they'll be like, oh, where you going to take me out? Like, what, what, like uh, it's even women I, I, I dealt with. I remember this one girl, I think I told y'all a couple of streams ago. Like, after we had sex, I'm chilling and everything. And she's like, so where you going to take me on a date? Like, straight up, I'm like, you know, I got to bust my nut, I'm chilling. She's like, so when are you going to take me on a date? I'm like, what the? The heck? I just bust my nut. And that's because a lot of women, they'll give you sex, but they still don't like you like that. Yeah, you got you to gotta realize, man, there has to be consist, a consistent pattern of submission and cooperation. Because a woman will give you sex. They'll have sex with you once, twice, three times at the most. Then they're like, okay, so what you doing for me? That's because she didn't really like you. <laughs> but somebody said, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be with a lady who isn't attracted to me anyway. Right. But the reason why guys give a woman who are who aren't really attracted to them for them is because men are desperate for sex. They're like, man, I, you know, she ain't all that, but and we have this like go-getter pursuer mindset. So if a girl's like really, ain't really answering our text messages, what'll happen is like we'll be like we'll double triple text. Well, I wouldn't. You'll double triple text. You're like you'll let's say she flakes or cancels on you once, then she do it again. You're like okay, let's reschedule. And, and in your mind, you think you're getting closer and closer to the sex, but in her mind, she like, dude, I don't really like you like that. She hoping you get the hint, but she like, all right, if you don't get the hint that I don't like you and go away, then I use you for attention, right? This is why a lot of guys deal with women who don't who like who aren't really into them because they're like, okay, this one text message, this text message is gonna be the one. Haven't you been there like, okay, let me this text message right here, it's gonna make her like me more. This this good morning text message, it's gonna it's gonna make her want me. Right? This is why guys, you, you have to really monitor. The things you do around women, and your behaviors. I'll take one chick who's into me, then ten chicks who like lukewarm, low interest. It's night and day. Cause then you be scratching your head, you be confused. Like man, why are these chicks playing games? And that's where guys start taking that black pill stuff. 
And they're like, man, all these chicks, man, they, man, I don't like, no, they, you're just dealing with women. And here's the thing, you're going to deal with a lot of women who are uncooperative, don't like you. You just have to cut them off quick. A lot of guys, they don't have that ability to cut women off quick because they, they go for that approach, right? They like, oh, they, they shoot, they shot, and then they're like, okay, this girl like me. So they keep trying, they keep trying. That girl gave you, that girl just gave you her number just for you to scram. Like, okay, cool, let's hang out. She gave you her number. You're like, man, man, this stuff Darius M talking about, it do work, man. I shot my shot. Then guess what? That's the only chick you really talking to. You texting her, texting her, trying to get her to hang out. She ain't with it. Okay, cool. That's the time you're supposed to cut off. But a lot of dudes, they, they continue that pattern of texting the chick, that same girl that they met three months ago, trying to hang out. And then when she like ghost them, or she said, like, we, should, we should just be friends. What happens is he's like, man, see, bro, man, I knew all these chicks was on BS. No, not, a, not all of them are on BS. She just showed you in the beginning that she didn't want to hang out with you. So then you cut it off. So you won't wait three months or three weeks of constantly texting her and she's draining your energy. Because that's what's going on right out here in the game, man. Too many women are draining you guys' energy. Hey, let's reschedule. Cut off. Hey, I'm sorry. Let's reschedule. Cut off. As opposed to saying, okay, cool, let's reschedule. And then you talking to her more, she draining energy. You reschedule, then she flake again. She draining energy. Draining you down, draining you down. Cut it off, man. Y'all gotta y'all gotta get the head of the snake. Too many guys are 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 all the way at the tail. These chicks ain't trying to hang out and, and chill, get together, and cut these females off, man. Let me sitting up there uh, playing around. Uh, somebody asked for my email. Somebody asked for a consultation. Give me a second, man. Uh, here's my email if you'd like a consultation. Shoot me an email. Let's get that set up. Get you some real game. Yeah, don't over pursue. Create space. Should a date you want to have with her end with sex or should you do you do it before the date? Me personally, I'm at the level of the game where, listen, I'm having sex before the date or like before I take you out. Just email me. I'll tell you all that, man. Just email me if you, if you have any questions about consultations and all that. So with me, a lot of guys at, at, at the stage of the game, it's totally fine. It's, it, my dad used to always tell us, I uh, mean, my brothers, it's more than one way to skin a cat, right? So... Me, I'm just straight direct. So I just tell her, oh, let's come over, you know, let's play some cards. I'll, let's have a bottle of wine. You know, watch a, a couple movies. Watch a show. That's just me. Now, for you, it might be, hey, let's go to a park. Let's walk around first. And then you might want to take her on a date and then smash. Or you might want to meet her for coffee and then bring her back to your place to smash. Then you take her on a date. But for me, shout out to Brother Ralphie, the date has to be earned. And when I say earned, I got to smash you a handful of times. Like I got, we got to hook up and have sex at least seven to 10 times. Then I, hey, I know uh, this nice spot down there. They got a Dairy Queen down there. You want to go some ice cream? Okay, cool. And she happy because then now she appreciates that little, uh, that little two, three dollar cone. So she eating the cone. A lot of, too many guys, you're going gung-ho and you, you coming in hot. So you you out there, you say, okay, let's go to let's go to Dairy Queen first. She orders something, then after that, she ain't really trying to have sex with you. No, she gotta earn that. Literally, she has to earn a two to three dollar ice cream. I can listen, I'm well off financially. I'm totally fine. But as but I think with my head though. A lot of guys, as a matter of fact, I had a consultation with a brother, um, man. Shout out to you, brother. Uh, he's 19 years old, and he straight up, he was like, man, he makes $70,000 a month. And he met this female on this dating app. I ain't going to get too much into it because I don't want to embarrass him. Um, but, um, you know, he was really breaking bread on this female. And she wasn't really submitting. She was like, she had no job. She had no real income. She was going to school. And he was like, uh, you know, she told me that, you know, she not my maid when it comes to cleaning up and stuff. I'm like, bro. But I don't get too much into it because that's you know, but really between me and my clients. But you guys gotta realize that that stuff gotta be earned. Guys, you gotta understand. I talk to millionaires, man. 
<laughs> I, guys, I've talked to millionaires, doctors, surgeons, pilots. I'll talk to guys who, you know, in the ghetto. I'll talk to guys from across the board. You got to understand, female nature doesn't really change like that. I talk to uh, 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 plastic surgeons. <clears throat> like, I talk to er guys from every continent. And I'm proud to say that. Uh, there's how do you get head at the movie theater? Um, for me, it's just like, uh, if that's your thing, it's just, you just, you know, get with the, uh, when I was in high school, I did that, uh, went to uh, movies with a chick and, uh, you know, uh, she, I was, I was like on the side cause at, at the movie theaters way back when I was in high school, it was on, on this, on the side, on the top, right. So it was kind of dark. So it's easy for her to give me head, but, um, just, you know, tell her, hey, give me head. But tell her before, like, hey, you're going to give me head in the, in the movie. Because if you tell her, like, you're supposed to be watching a movie. Like, you can give me head in the car. I don't know. I mean, if that's like a fetish or something like that, cool. When I was young, I just, she, you know, she had, she stayed with her parents. I, you know, stayed with my parents. So I couldn't, I couldn't really go nowhere. <laughs> right? So it had to kind of be right there. <clears throat> Uh, oh yeah, yeah. You guys, you guys gotta make these women earn these dates, man. Y'all be sitting up here buying, up, breaking bread on all these chicks and spending money to man, make these girls earn this stuff. Us, uh, like, bro, you can take a girl out here and there, but number one, make sure it's uh, a place you want to go, and at the same time, make sure you do it in moderation. Because believe me, women are thinking, they're counting. Oh, I had sex with this girl. I gave him head. So he they're calculating in their head. Don't break. Now you, after, after you smash and get got head about five times, then you say, all right, let's go to this hot dog shack. She get a hot dog and, and some fries for like $5. That's cool. You get your hot dog and fries for $5. Guess what? She happy. Cause it ain't about the money. It's the fact that, Hey, this guy has rewarded me. And then maybe, you know, you smash a half four more times then y'all can go see a movie. But when y'all go to the movie, you say, Hey, I'll take care of the tickets. You take care of the popcorn. So that's y'all like second date. Now you done smash about 10 times between then. So, so she's still pitching in. That's how you guys got to train these women, man. Y'all be like, okay, I, I smashed one time. Hey, let's go see a movie. Mortal Kombat coming out. Hey, man, I, I can't wait for more to come out to come out. I think it come out in like a week and a half. I'm excited for that. So you're like, oh, let's go see the movie. And then you get there, you pay. You, you are already training her. You pay for the movie. You pay for the popcorn. You pay for the drink. So she's sitting there just drinking. Now in her head, she's like, oh, so he's going to pay for everything. Now you got to tell these women, hey, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the uh, tickets. You get the uh, snacks. He said, okay, cool. So then now you're, you're, you're training her to, to pitch in. Too many of you guys are coming to these relationships and situations and y'all not training these chicks. Y'all just getting there and y'all got these, like, they pay for everything. And y'all wonder why they don't appreciate y'all. Y'all wonder why they leave y'all so, so easily, man. Because you're breaking bread too much and too often. And what's happening is they're getting wind of that, so now they don't respect you. They don't. They treat you as a trick. So now, yeah, you went from a situation where y'all, she liked you. Now, she's like, okay, I expect him to do all this stuff for me. And if he don't, then she's going to be confused. And a lot of guys, they try to go from this beta mindset, and they try to, like, flip it to, like, all right, you got to start investing. And she she been with you. Y'all been together for, like, a whole year. And you done broke bread the, the entire year. You paid for 98, 99% of the stuff. And now all of a sudden, you want, you ready for her to like, all right, you got to pitch in. Now she's going to look at you confused. 
This is why I always tell you guys, you have to lay the foundation when you deal with women. You have to, you have to boom, let her know what it's going to be. Now, if you that guy that's trying to trick and break bread, okay, that's cool. I'm not telling you how to spend your money. I'm just telling you how women are going to view you. Exactly. Stole the words out of my mouth. How you start is how you finish with chicks. So if you, this is why I tell you guys, going back to what I said about, about a couple hours ago in the, in the stream, how you start is how you finish. So if you tell her to come straight over, guess what? You're starting out sexual so she knows that's the type of relationships and situation you're going to have. But if you start out like, hey, let's, uh, I know this nice restaurant, let's go over here. Guess what? She'll say, okay, cool. You could have easily just told her to come to the crib. She was, she would have been down with it. But you simping and you think that's what you got to do. So you take her to a nice restaurant and then she's like, oh, cool. So she eat off your dime. She said, okay, well, uh, I'm going to go home. Because now you got that foundation that you're a guy who's going to take her out. You're a trick. Now, now y'all know why I say sex first, because that's the foundation. Dates, dates don't build relationships. Guys, let me tell you something. Dates don't build attraction. I should say, going to the park does. That's still considered a date or maybe some coffee. But like spending money on women at restaurants and drinks and all stuff like that, that's not, that doesn't build attraction. If she ain't into you physically, she just ain't into you. Oh, join the Patreon as well. We'll put the link up. The way you start with a woman is usually how you finish. Make sure you start how you want in a selfish way. How do you fully accomplish semen retention and ways to not relapse? Um, shout out to High, High, High Life Dabs 420. Um, well, here's how you start off with semen retention. Um, oh, that's basically not jagging off and jerking off. Uh, now I haven't masturbated in freaking years. Like, God, it's been years, years, years. Um, for starters, if you want to master semen retention, you got to stay busy. Number one, you got to stay busy. Now ask yourself this when it comes to all you semen retention guys. This is a key question. Are you practicing semen retention because you can't get sex? Or are you practicing semen retention because you can get sex, but you're just trying to channel your energy in other directions? That's the big question. Because a lot of guys doing the semen retention stuff and it's a facade because they mad because they can't get laid. So they say, well, I'm just going to, I'm semen retention now. Dude, you wasn't getting no sex regards. You wasn't getting no play. So you practice semen retention mean nothing. I mean, it does mean something. It's just like, uh, <laughs> you, you don't know what I'm talking about. I don't want to call it the semen retention guys, but what I'm saying is, are you practicing sexual discipline or semen retention because you can get women and you you just want to you know practice you know just discipline and you're, you're, you're trying to focus on other things or are you practicing semen retention because you can't get women and you have no other choice so you're just doing it by default you are already practicing retention that's the question or when it comes to jerking off are you doing it this and it goes back to what i'm saying can you get women because let's say this if you guys can't if you have no good social skills and you can't get women or you're, you're, you're not confident, you go, you practice the semen retention means nothing. Because you wouldn't get put, shoot, I got to keep it PG. You wouldn't get sex anyway. And I know a lot of semen retention guys going to be male. Are you married with you? Yeah, let's, let's call it spade a spade. You wasn't getting laid anyway, so you try to practice this new thing, what's that going to do for you? Because guess what? You're still going to be feeling the same uh, effects. Because, uh, guys, we got to start calling the spade a spade, man. I'll say this, too. The reason why a lot of guys practice semen retention is because they're having trouble with dealing with women. So what they'll do is they'll get them, they'll have, like, two to three women they deal with, maybe four or five women, and they're, like, flaky. They, they, they playing games. 
you know, they just say ain't following this lead. So he said, okay, I'm going to practice semen retention now. No, it's just, listen, you got to revisit that. Because something that you're doing with those women, some behaviors, some things that maybe they're doing, that's causing you frustration. So you go on semen retention, you still going to have to revisit and go back to what was going on with those three, four women in your rotation. Were you maybe over double texting them? Were you like too needy? So what I'm saying is, yes, practice semen retention when you, you know, do it for yourself. But at the same time, make sure you're not doing it because you have you just having issues with chicks. Because you like the, the your one chick you was dealing with, she or two chicks, they was on some goofiness. So you're like, man, forget these girls. You should be doing it if you're doing it to, uh, you know, become better. To, to uh, be a little more focused. And I'll say this. You can still deal with chicks. You can still approach chicks. You can still smash chicks. And you can still be productive. You can do all that and still be very productive. A lot of guys, they try to use that semen retention because they're they're like, they're not smashing the chicks that they want or, or they're not getting the women that they want or the women cooperate. So what's happening is they're like, well, um, semen retention. But but deep down at, at the core, you know what you really want. You want to smash something. You want to interact. And that's cool. Just make sure you're doing it for the right reason. Right? That's my whole spiel about that. Um, shout out to Malala Elephant. Um, we got a few further comments. Um, Zether PB, where do you smash a chick with no place? Currently in the process of getting my own place. Uh, just uh, take her to the park. I don't know where you live, but I remember um, I was taking a chick to like this park and uh, I would lay the blanket out and then I'd just smash her from the back right under the stars. I mean, I was just cradling that shit. Clap, clap, clap. I'm talking about just creasing her literally at night. All right. And I, I remember this girl was like quiet. She was like, I remember we went to the gas station. I was like, you want something? She was like, no. Like, she barely, I'm like, this weird. It was like, and that was the most quietest chick I smashed. Like, it was consistent. She just was like, I'm like, uh, something's, you know, you all right? She's like, yeah. I'm like, all right. <laughs> uh, like, the, the most, that's how I know, like, the most quiet chicks be the most freakiest, man. I'm telling her I was creasing that shit on a little blanket. Right under the stars. It was in the summertime. Semen retention makes you confident and it gives you more energy. Also, you stay in masculine frame. Now, when it comes to semen retention, I just want to make sure this is right. Is it... Because uh, some guys do semen retention for different reasons. Is it because you're jerking off and you want to stop? Or is it because you can get chicks and you smash chicks and you just, you know, just focusing on the bigger picture, your purpose and everything like that? Which one is it? Because sometimes it's guys that's, that's just beating their meat and they just, they, they, they don't want to do it no more. So they want to practice, you know, semen retention. So which one is it? Uh, Mello Evans said, when you hit 40 like me, semen retention will come natural because your testosterone will be as high as it is in your 20s and 30s. You will be on your purpose even more. Exactly. Like I'm 32. Um, it, it's, it's not difficult for me to not smash a chick like for a whole week or, or, or two. Like, I'll even say this. There's been times like my chick come over and she stay like, uh, let's say she come over like on a Friday night. You know, she laying in my bed naked and then I just, you know, just chilling and I just don't even feel like smashing her. Right? And I just don't feel like, you know, hooking up, having sex. It's just, all right, I just don't, you know, I just don't. No, nah, it's, it's just your, your testosterone starts to lower a little bit more and more. Or, or I should say you've had sex a lot, so it's like it's not a big deal. And a lot of guys got to get that out of their system, man. You haven't hooked up, you haven't had sex with chicks, so it's kind of like it's new to you. you like, man, there's uh, uh, you're chasing chicks around. I guess that's the benefit of, of me uh, approaching and talking and hooking up with a lot of women over, over my, uh, my life my adult life because I'm not like enamored by any female. 
I'm not like uh, gloviating and, and salivating over any female. Yes, I do take vitamins. Take, I take them every day. Because it's it's like, all right, she, she got nice butt. All right, cool. I'm at the point. Here's here's where I'm at the point now. I think I talked about, about another stream. I'd rather approach a female to ask him a question to get him on like on, on, on my YouTube channel to get some footage. I'd rather approach an attractive female to get some footage and ask him a question than to like approach him and be like, you know, uh, let's get the other hang out. If you have somebody said what vitamins you take, hit the super chat. I tell you that. Buy me some vitamins, um, because I, I'm I'm trying to play chess, not checkers. It it work. It's it's worth a hundred times more if I have an attractive female on camera on my YouTube channel, than to me to smash that chick and not. I'm not making money off of it. I'm not getting no views off. Of it. I'm, not, I'm not getting anything. I'm not teaching you guys anything. So that's how I see the game right now. I, I'm trying to look to make money off women. Not uh, as opposed to, you know, smashing a lot of them. It's like, all right, you know. Yeah, all right. Uh, you said that last live. I remember that. Oh, I did tell you, unique mind. Exactly. Sex is not a big deal when you've gotten it so many times. It's not a big deal. Now, granted, you still, you know, you, you know, knock the chick off. But at the same time, you're like, eh. Uh, all right. I, yeah, yeah, you know, you you start to find other things in life that that that, that are fun. Because when I was nineteen, twenty, man, I was hopping around. I was trying to smash. I'm, when I say I was trying to, I was, pat, 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 pat. I mean, I was trying to, man. I, I remember, like, I was, I was trying to smash like three, four, five chicks a week. Like hopping, hopping. Now it's just, you know, now I'm like, man, okay. Um, I'm more about my purpose. Much more. And I'm, I'm more about my purpose and peace. I'm looking at, I'm trying to see what's going on on ESPN. I'm trying to see some highlights. Heck, I'd rather have that on a Saturday than like a, a chick come through, really. And it's like, eh, that's cool and all, but ain't nothing beats peace. Nothing beats you enjoying, you enjoying your own company. I'm at the point now where I'm looking to make money off them too and business ideas. Yeah, man. Yes, man. Like, I would, like, when it comes to the gym game, okay, if I, let's say I, I, I bet a bad, I saw a bad chick at the gym, like a 10, right? And I, we exchanged numbers and she came to my crib and we smashed. Strategically wise, what am I getting out of it, really? Now, I would rather personally talk to this chick. Hey, listen, I got a channel. You know, I got, I, I got, uh, you know, I teach you guys about dating, life, and relationships, and just advice. Uh, it'd be great for you, you know, me to ask you a question, a couple of questions. Is that cool? She's like, oh, yeah, that's cool. So, get, so now I got an attractive female that I'm asking a couple of questions. Boom, throw on the channel. Guys going wild. Like, oh man, she's a. And guess what? So I benefit off that far more than me bringing over my place and just a smash. Because it's like, guys, you, when you get as you get older in the game, you'll start to realize that, okay, man, I need some, I need something for for, for dealing with you. Yo, what you what you doing for me? I, you you start to like stop like taking chicks on dates. You get tired of that. You're like, man, I, I don't feel like courting you. I done tried to court a couple of women in my early 20s. They was on some silly stuff. So it's like, you try to, you trying to get something out of them. Then you start using your big head except for your little head. You start using, uh, being more rational. You're like, okay, so you're thinking, so what is she bringing to the table in my life? It's our sex. And this is how we win in the end, like I said a couple of hours ago in the stream. This is how we, us men win in the end eventually because then you start asking yourself logical questions question you start thinking i said okay so what you doing for me oh, oh, hey, buy me this give me this stop at the stop at the store and give me some give me some uh give me something to drink right you start putting these women to work 
as opposed to them like saying, oh, hey, I'm in my way. You like happy, like, okay, cool. Yeah, you said, oh, okay, cool. You're on your way. Hey, you might, hey, you might, you might stop in and get some, uh, 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 some dinner rolls or something. You might stop in and get some, something to drink. Let me, let me, let me see if I can use this chick. Let me see if I can get something, man. I got to get something. Because I'm going to come over and guess what? I'm going to smash. I got to get something. Then now you start to realize, okay, the, the, the tables have really turned when you start thinking like that. Because every woman I deal with, I'm trying to get something. Like, like no be like, listen, what you going to do for me? What, what, what's, what's, I mean, hey, get me this. Hey, stop in the store. Get some, go run and get some toilet tissue real quick. I, listen, I, I'm looking at stuff around the house like, Man, if, listen, if the lights go out, I, I, hey, uh, stop. Can you stop in the store and get, get a light bulb? I'm, I'm, I'm looking for stuff to, to, because you get to a level in life where s sex is not the end all be all. It's cool to have, but over time, you just like, all right. Uh, hey, become an Apex Predator member. Oh, Jerry Conway, great to see you. On average, uh, when a woman reaches thirty-four, he starts thinking with the the head up on his shoulders and don't and and now with the mushroom tip in. Yeah. You the reason me and girls' relationship lasted over a year. Appreciate it, man. Where we at? Uh, I know we've been going for. I'm at the point now too where I'm looking to make some money off them too and business ideas. Yeah, you guys gotta like put these chicks to work, man. That's that's a whole nother uh next level game to your uh Patreon joint, putting women to work so they can make money for you. A lot of guys don't know how to make women make money for them. That's that's a whole nother uh level of the game where. You have to have enough sex to know how to do this. Somebody said something about the Brooklyn Nets. Hit the super chat. I'll tell you about that. Um, <laughs> thyroid problems are an issue, especially in the U.S. Be sure to check your hormones occasionally for sure. Uh, how would she bring value into my, my life other than sex? Oh, was that a question or a phrase? Yeah, yeah, like women, uh, soon I'll be getting another consultation with you again. Shout out to Unique Mind. Uh, yeah, hit me up, shoot me an email, man, or, or text me. Um, how to bring uh, a woman bringing value to your life other than sex. Guess what? They have jobs, right? Am I right or am I wrong? Do, don't these women got jobs? Don't they make money? Huh? See, y'all be too, see, y'all live in this, this traditional sort of mindset and lifestyle. You're like, oh yeah, I'm the man, so I got to pay for everything. Man, get the, tch. see, y'all living that life, and guess what? Women live in a 2021, 22, 2022 lifestyle. They're like, yeah, uh, I like a traditional man, but they going to work, getting their money and, and taking care of themselves and spending on themselves. They talking about secure the bag. Have you ever, have, have you heard a man like say secure the bag? No. Women make that secure the bag up because that's what they care about, secure the bag, which means taking your money too. Exactly. Those days are over. They got careers. They got money. Is she spending money on you? She'll break bread on Pookie ass in prison. She'll put money on his books. Y'all think I'm playing. Oh, guys, let me say this. I don't care how well off you are. She better be contributing financially. Sex means nothing. That's a mutual exchange. Matter of fact, as, me as a man, I'm working way harder than you when it comes to sex. That's a mutual exchange. So what am I getting out of it? Are you giving me some shoes? Are you, uh, you know, upgrading my wardrobe or something? Are you getting stuff around the house? Are you doing my laundry? Are you, uh, you know, uh, whatever it is. 
Are you cooking? Are you cleaning? Are you doing dishes? Hey, give me a give me a freaking bath. I had you give me a bath years ago, man. Serious. On my birthday, like like at least about four years ago. I'm sitting in the tub and she's just just uh y'all know those uh one of those big pictures, one of those slave pictures where they had the Kool-Aid in there. She just <laughs> I'm sitting there naked. She just I'm like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Man, yo, I'm telling y'all, I don't, I'm, man, I done had some experiences with women. Literally, on my birthday, she gave me hair, like she just gave me straight hair. And I busted her mouth, then I got up naked off the couch, got in the tub. She had the bath bombs in there, and then she, shh, I'm talking about just gave me a straight up bath. I'm lifting my, listen, <laughs> hey, Jeremy Corner, you ain't seen in a while. I'm, listen, I'm telling you, I'm lifting my arm up. She washing me up. Listen, man, y'all got to put these chicks to work. I'm not playing. <laughs> I'm not playing with y'all, man. Why do these chicks not give you a bath? And then after she done gave me a bath and cleaned me good, I'm standing, listen, I'm standing like a little kid. Y'all know how if you a little kid, after you get, after you get, after, <laughs> after you get, I, I have to get a towel somewhere, man. Let me give y'all an example. Um, I'm sitting there, hold on. <laughs> oh, man, I'm about to die, man. After I done got a bath, man. Listen. I'm telling you, she gave me, listen, she gave me a bath. I'm sitting, I'm standing up naked and, and like a little, yeah, you know how you a little kid and you standing like this and you like, <laughs> here I am, grown, and I'm sitting there, she, and I'm sitting there, and she just, guess what? My legs open the whole more, she just dry me out. But that, again, that's the type of experience y'all got to start having. And the reason why I had that, because guess what I said? She, she straight up, she's like, what you want for your birthday? I said, I want you to give me a bath. She said, okay. You guys gotta start demanding and tell these women what y'all want. Don't be like, oh, I don't want nothing. I just got you, baby. Nah, no, you ain't good enough. So she's in that driving up. I'm like, guess what? I'm walking in the room and she made a nice meal, cooked, clean, uh, cooked and everything, dessert. And guess what? Sucked me off again. Sucked me off again. So she sucked me off twice in a day. And I ain't have to smash. I didn't want her uh, box. <laughs> Somebody said, Derek, you experience women on a different level. Uh, the, but the, his thing, the reason why, <laughs> she has a unique mind. The reason why I experience women on a different level because that's just, that's the, my, been my mindset. That's, I just demand that. So you, you, got, you guys got the, like too many guys, they just want, and this is why women like dupe you guys. Because women have all these different demands, which are outrageous. But then when it comes to like us, us wanting something, y'all like scared. Like, oh, yeah, I can't ask her. Uh, she said what I want for my birthday. Um, you like, oh, I don't want nothing, baby. I just got you. It's just me and you. And then she like, okay. No, nah, yeah, like, listen, I want you to, you know, um, I want to look threesome. You know, your friend, let's, let's make that happen. Or, you know, I, I want you to give me these shoes. Give me these two pair of shoes. Like, tell these chicks, oh, let's go to the mall. I want you to give me some shoes. Like, guys, these females be sending y'all memes and different silly articles and 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 uh and um on the internet. Tell you, listen, start sending these females like, hey, uh, hey, I want these shoes. Hey, babe, you give me some, hey, give me these shoes. They come out like next week, like straight up. Copy, paste, send it a link. Tell they get you some shoes, man. Tell they get you like a a, deep, uh, a couple, a few shirts. You guys got to start asking for stuff. That, like that's, That doesn't make you less of a man. That's the thing. Too many guys that operate on that mindset. Oh, if I ask for something, that's going to make me less of a man. Nah. Mm -mm. I can see right now, the women who do buy you stuff, those are the ones that stick around because she knows she invested. Oh, I got to... So it's some guys that say, oh, I got to pay 100 You ain't no real man if you don't pay 100%. Guess what? 
I'm getting 100% total submission and cooperation, and she's still paying for the majority of stuff. Again, going back to what I was saying about a half hour ago, you got to be number one on our list. She has to really like you. The female supervisor I had at work was buying me cakes and cookies for my birthday and legit buying me free food. I understand why not. Yeah, because you're top of the list. Because she like you. And a lot of guys, they got you got to experience that. And I want you guys to experience that sort of thing, man. You number one on the list, she like text you, I can't wait to see you. Man, y'all got y'all dealing with chicks and y'all text her, hey, um, are you close? How far away are you? How far man, a chick should be telling you, hey, I'm on the way, I can't wait to see you. With a smiley emoji, y'all just got chicks that just coming around you that's like lukewarm. Like, hey, I'm on the way. Or they'll say, oh, OMW, like on my way. As opposed to really like being enthused and excited. Guys, y'all got women, man. They ain't even excited to be around y'all, man. They'll, they'll come around you, but they ain't really like into you like that. Guys, make sure y'all get the last stream a thumbs up. Everybody like the stream. I'm serious. They'll be around you. They don't like you like that. They just like, well, you know. And they got a bad attitude. I've been around a few chicks like that. I remember um, years ago, I had, uh, this chick lived like 30 minutes away, 30, 35 minutes, right? And she didn't have a car. She said her car was in the shop. Y'all know chicks be lying like, I was like, all right, whatever. So I went to pick her up from her crib. It was funny. And when I picked her up, um, and, and she's a good looking girl, cute girl. And I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be an easy smash. Like, I would start to think, okay, I'm going to pick her up. She lived like 30, 35 minutes away. And she's going to cooperate. Man, I picked this chick up. She's sitting in my car. I'm like, hey, what's up? She's like, hey. And like, on the way on the way to the crib, she like te just texting on her phone. In the passenger side, I'm like, do you not know that I just picked you up? I could dump you on the side of the road. So in my mind, I could have easily like said, hey, I don't want to do this. I just turned back. Because I, I just felt the like negative. I felt the I felt the entitled energy. I'm like, she didn't even have her own place. She she's she said her car was in the shop. Chicks be lying. So I said, I, I'm thinking it's gonna be easy, quick smash, and we're gonna have a good time. Picked her up, she just on her phone, like a little entitled bougie attitude. I said, okay, cool. I could easily take you back, but no, I ain't about to waste that gas. So you know what I did? Because I noticed she, I got a feeling she had used to been doing that to dudes. Just having that attitude. So she thought, oh, just because I picked her up, that like she's some princess or queen. I said, okay, cool, bet. We get to my place. You know what? I didn't even cook none of dinner because I said I don't cook dinner. I didn't even do that because I knew the vibe. I ain't going to feed you with that bad bougie attitude. So guess what I did? I said, you know, I came out, you know, I'm, I'm like, I tried, all right, let's, uh, let's get together, you know, cuddle up. I'm trying to get sexual a little bit. She was like, oh, I don't feel comfortable right now. So she's sitting at the edge of my, in my, of my couch, still on her phone. I said, I said, did you bring a purse or anything? She said, uh, she, and she literally like, huh? I'm like, you bring a purse or anything? She's like, uh, no. I, I, guys, I, I, I kid you not. Like straight up attitude. I said, oh, okay. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you a lesson. Because I easily could have took you back to your crib. She like texting her phone with her attitude. She has some big titties, nice butt. All right, you see, you used to doing that to do. So I'm gonna teach you a lesson. So I said, hey, um, and I tried to get a little physical. She's like, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm really, really comfortable like that. I don't know you like that. And I'm sitting there like, you're at my house. You have no way to get back home. So then I was like, hey, let's just call it. Let's, let's, let's uh, he said, let's just, let's just, uh, it's over. Let's end the night. And she's like, okay. So she put her shoes on, and she's still standing. She's standing by my door like this. On her phone. And I'm like, uh, you okay? And she like, and I'm in my boxes around the house. She like, uh, yeah. She's like, I'm waiting on you. I'm like, what you waiting on me for? She was like, uh, to take me home. And I'm like, no, this is a, this is a different chick, a unique mind. This is a different chick. It was a Spanish chick that did it. It was a black chick. So then, um, she like, uh, to take me home. And I'm like, uh, why would I take you home? You you got in my car with an attitude. You sit on the couch with an attitude. You texting. 
with attitude. I mean, why, why, why would I waste my gas and time? She was like, are you serious? I'm like, yes, I am. Now leave. She was like, guess what she said? But I don't have no way to get home, though. Then her whole mood changed. And she was like, I don't have no money. I, gotta, I said, well, you got a phone. You can find some way. She's like, are you seriously going to do this to me now? I said, yeah, you got to go. Like, get out of my house. She's like, oh, wow. you like, you really bogus right now. Are you serious? And she couldn't believe it. That's how I know that women are used to doing that stuff to do. Used, used to having attitudes like that. Because she, she was confused. Like, what are you, this dude going to kick me out? This dude going to, like, get rid of me? He picked me up? So I said, yeah. Got rid of like that. She's like, wow. And she's sitting out, she's literally sitting outside. And and she's from my knowledge, I mean, she sat out there for look good three, four hours. Cause she ain't bring that's the thing, she ain't bring no purse, she ain't bring nothing. See you later. Playing with y'all chicks, man. One of these silly bougie games. The other one was the girl that was out of place for out your place for hours. The, <coughs> it was a it, it was a black chick, it was it was a, it was a Hispanic chick. Two chicks shot to do that. That uh silly thing. No, excuse me, it was three chicks. It was like two black chicks and it was like a Hispanic chick that tried to do that. Yeah, man, it just, it, 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 like, I, like, I had, um, man, so many stories. I had, uh, it's, it's not, it's, it hasn't been too many white chicks that, like, that's, that, that, like, came to my crib that ain't do nothing. I'll say, let's say I had 10 white chicks come to my crib, hypothetically. Eight of them, all eight of them, we hooked up and had sex. Like, it was like 80% chance. Matter of fact, I think a good 90%, let's say 90%, it was 90% chance. I'm be honest. It ain't been many black, like, white chicks that, like, came over that was like, no, nah, we ain't doing that. Like, like majority of white chicks, good 90%, hooked up, we had sex, had a good time. Black chicks, they was like, Psh. Like, a few Hispanic chicks, they just have, like, a bougie attitude. Now, a lot of dudes, one of them are like, oh, why you only deal with white chicks like that? Or, like, why you only deal with black chicks? It's like, because I've been in the game for a long time and I know how black chicks get out. And I know how other races get out. So, I'm gonna, listen, I'm only going where there's going to be peace. I don't. I ain't trying to deal with no dysfunction. I ain't trying to deal with no chicks that got an attitude, that, that think they better than me when they're around me. Like, the chick I told you, she ain't had no car. Let's like just say she said it's in the shop. Probably lying. And she had her own place. But, I'm, but I got my own car and I got my own place and you going to come around me with attitude? Get out of my place. Right? So, um, you guys gotta understand, um, I don't necessarily go based off, like, ethnicity or skin color. What I go off of is, is uh, submission and cooperation. Because I dealt with a couple black chicks in my life that was straight up submission, like, that was, like, as far as sexually, like, boom. Other areas, they really wasn't. But I go off submission, cooperation, who will give me the least amount of headaches. My standards and criteria has, has, has risen. Because before it was like, all right, you know, she uh, cute. She let me, you know, we smash, we hang out. Now it's like, right, you got to be in shape. It ain't just like cute. You got to be in shape. You got to be submissive. You got to be able to give a good massage. That's going to be on the Patreon as well. You got to be able to wash dishes. Uh, it's a lot of different things now before I even want to smash and hook up with you. Uh DHK, it hurts when a woman lets her fear get in the way because she thinks you're too good looking or out of her league. I'll say that. Let me go over that real quick. DHK, that happens all the time, guys. Guys, the reason why a lot of women reject you, yeah, because you're not her number one, but honestly, because you're too good looking. It's because you're in shape. It's because you, you have your life together. I'm telling you. He said, next slide, let's do a member only. Uh, it's been a minute. Yes, yeah, it has been a minute. Next slide, we're doing a member only live stream. Make sure you guys click the link that's pinned and become an exclusive member. Shout out to Mr. Uh, Brent Partial. Right, so uh, guys, it, it's been like that many times. Where a girl, she's insecure, you, you're, you're in shape, you look good, you're handsome, you, you got that masculine frame, and she's just scared like, oh. So her fear overrides her desire to want to uh, be with you sexually. Like I told you, I, like it's been so many women that are like, oh, um, uh, so do you just want to hook up? Am I gonna hear from you again? And you're like, uh, okay, yeah. And she and they're just scared because they know you have options. They know that you 
uh, are the dude that, that they can't control. They know you a dude that's that's not weak. So what they do is they just like uh they just drift away. Or like what so what happens with some women, they'll have sex with you like a couple times and they drift away because they're like, man, I this this dude, he got a lifestyle that he living that I, I can't keep up with that. You're on the go, you up at six, seven, eight a.m. They still sleeping by then. They sleeping through the whole weekend, basically. You out doing things. In their mind, they're like, how am I going to keep up with that? You out working out, you fit, you active, and they're like, man, this dude, I don't even do none of that. So, you know, they just reject you or they ghost you. You know, it happens all the time. Shout out to DHK. Um, shout out to uh, all you guys uh, for contributing and, and, and tuning in to the show. I was literally talking from six so, for almost a little over what, two and a half hours just going. See, this is what happens when you enjoy what you do. You don't need no panel. You don't need no interviews. You don't need none of that. It's just from start to finish. Two and a half hours. I will go longer, honestly, but my battery about to die. <laughs> that's the only reason why I cut a lot of most live streams off. Because my battery about to die is, is, and, and that's it. So other than that, guys, um, we're going to keep this live stream up. Remember, if you're not our number one, then she don't really like you like that. It's going to be uphill battle for you. All right. Uh, I'm away. I'm awake at 1 a.m. Past the most. Past the most, and you can necessarily keep up my structure and positivity. That's Jeremy Warner, unique mind. Uh, uh, what was your question? I gave you a question, uh, Mister 420. You asked about the semen retention. I went in depth for about a good 10, 12 minutes. I think you got to rewind it back for like 25 minutes to uh, look. But I, 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 get, I answered your question and went in depth. Shout the Super Saiyan. Uh, Jason uh, F. File. Next live stream, we're doing a, uh, Apex Predator members only. Period. Come with y'all questions, brothers. Love you guys. We out of here. Shout out to Jeremy Warner. All you guys.